Cheers. Cheers, man. <laughs> Cheers for coming on. Mate, it's good to be on the show. Well, basically, obviously, one of the reasons I got you on is because it's a fucking journey. Literally, from little old Jersey to the bright lights of America. Do you know what I mean? Like, how the fuck? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, how? How did that... Because, obviously, when you came over here, you were, what, 21? I was 20... Yeah, 21 when I first arrived on The Rock. Right. Um... I remember my boss's wife picking me up at the airport. Didn't even know where Jersey was. Didn't even know anything about map? Jersey. Not <laughs> the day of the I was leaving, my mate was like, "Where's Jersey? Where are you going?" I'm like, "I haven't got a clue." So yeah. I turned up at Southampton Airport, and uh, I'm just literally going to get on the plane. Yeah. They picked me up, took me to the Admiral Pub, and was like, "I was staying in one of the rooms above the Admiral Pub." My bag, I chucked my bag in the corner, and I got drunk. This was <laughs> on a Sunday. My bag stayed in the pub. I had to go get all the good Anna in the morning to pick my bag up to get to get my work gear out of there, right? Stumbled up to my room and that was my welcome to Jersey. And that is uh, the only welcome to Jersey. Yeah. Really. That's, but that's I, what I, it is. Exactly. But I thought I was coming here and it was just like a sleepy little old village. I was going to come work, earn a load of money, save it up, go home, buy a house or <laughs> and just do the normal thing. But no, yeah. little did I know that like, this was like a... So was that the first time you came to Jersey or... That was the first ever time, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was it? That was, yeah, 21. Yeah, right. And then... When did you first start training? Not until I was 28, 27, 28. Fucking hell. Yes. So did you do anything before then, like boxing or? So I, I, must, I started boxing, I don't know how old I was exactly, but I remember I was, at, I was at high school, maybe around about 13, 14 I might have started. Um, I, I lived from the guy that I ended up moving in with. Me and him used to box in the uh, in his garden, and his dad would be coaching us. Right, be pitch black, get the gloves on, it's outside sparring. Oh mate, loved it. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll be out there just rock and sock them, just hitting each other. Just, to, but yeah, um, that was the days of learning. But uh, they'd be like, oh yeah, he's got potential. Yeah. Now when I find, I was like, what did you mean when I had potential? So you kept coming back. Yeah. Like, I'd get my fucking ass kicked, man. Yeah. Like, I remember him hitting me. He banged me with a right hand. I kind of folded over backwards, folded over backwards. And then I kind of came back and I had a look on my face. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck was that? Like fucking panic attack, fucking all sorts yeah. of shit. But Seen yeah, I was, back, all was sorts. back there, back there the next training session. And, uh, but yeah, that was when I started. So about 14, a couple of fights, lost those. Um, but yeah, then I was, boxing really isn't for me. Like I wanted to follow my old man's footsteps. Which is what? That. Uh, Which is what? What did he? My do? old man fought, fought in the army. He was boxing champion in the army. So the same like, as yeah. my granddad. Yeah. Enough. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 He yeah. is in um, Wigan. I can't remember. He got jailed, as the story goes. He got drunk one night, stole a lorry in the army, and then um, yeah, crashed it into the barracks, sent him to prison in the army, and they only let him out to fight. And then he's a champion boxer from that. Basically, he spent his entire fucking time in the army in prison. They love, they love, they love fighters. Though. Oh fucking hell, yeah! If they, if they, if they feel that you as a strong fighter, they will push you and, and try and get well, you that's, fighting. Yeah, half the fucking thing of being in the army, it's fighting. Yes, Re oh, relevant yeah, yeah, of what yeah. kind of fight it is, it's still a fight. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But um, so what? So obviously you came over here. So six, what's that? Six years after you got over here, seven years after you got in there. Yeah. How did yeah. you wind up at rolling at the um at the gym? So uh, so yeah, so when I came over here. I was 21, right. and uh, I was like, I, I, I knew about jujitsu. I, I knew about, I knew I wanted to start something. Mm. But I went up the club and I started rolling with this young lad, Yarrick. His name is right. It was a, I think he was. He's always been a blue belt that I've ever known him, right? Right. And um, but now he, now he's a black belt, right? So this is this is a good few years ago. Yeah. But um, he fucking rolled, and I mean that was my introduction to this place, and he fucking he showed me what jujitsu was. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that. I never came to the island to, to, to do that just yet. So yeah, I was yeah. like, right, mental note. I know where this club is. Stick I'm a going, pin in it. Yeah, 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 I'm going to drink. So <laughs> that was it. For a good few years, just drinking, partying, and just... Enjoying the island life. Just it, just living life. Yeah. Enjoying life. Knowing that what that there, that's there. It's always going to be there. And it's always safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm young. Let me go be young and, <laughs> and enjoy it. <laughs> Get those stories. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what was it? When did it become like, um, you, know, you have that defining moment where you think, hang on a minute, I've done the party and I've done the thing. Do you know what I mean? When did you think that was the next thing in line? It was It was after jail. I went, uh, I went to jail. I had uh, 20... 
2008 is when I came out of jail. Oh, really? <clears throat> no, not in the mainland. Oh, right, right. Um, like I say, I knew the club. I knew where the club was. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't been anywhere near the club or anywhere near it. I may have, when I went back to it, I may have gone to a boxing gym, had a few sparrows, yeah, gone yeah, to yeah, a few yeah. weight gyms, or whatever, but nothing to the extent of where I was going. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I knew, I knew, I knew where that club was. And, uh, when I turned up after jail, it was like fucking straight to that club. I was like, right, I'm ready to start training now. And Topo turned around with one of the coaches there. He was like, I remember you coming in a few years ago. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I wasn't ready now. <laughs> I was like, but now let's yeah. let's do this, you know. It's like I wanna I wanna learn this sport, I wanna enjoy it. And um but yeah, now I started rolling and that was it. You know when you love something? Yeah. You can do it every day. Yeah. And just and I love fighting. Three sixty five. Yeah. yeah. Any day, all day, wake up in the morning, think about it. They show you something, you it soaks in, and that was exactly how it was with jujitsu. I, I the passion I had for it was like they showed me a triangle. I knew the triangle straight away. They showed me the inverted triangle. They've shown me some mad technique. It was Eddie Eddie Bravo's. Um, it's called the Twister. It was Topo's favorite move, and that was like the first move he'd show me. But it was so complicated to trying to understand the movements. You try and get you get it one time, and then you wouldn't, and you you got to get the lockdown right. There's so many components. Yeah, there's everything has to go well at the same time. Yeah, yeah. if you do one step, you got you got to do the different steps. If you skip a step, they can. And escape. you're leading another person while you're doing it. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, so, obviously, when you landed back in the gym, because that you, you'd be classed as a late bloomer. That. Oh you, well, I was a well late bloomer. Because 28 years old. Do you know what I mean? So then. Yeah, when when I say around people, they said, "Oh yeah, I'm going to go win the world title." People laughed. <laughs> people were like, "Yeah, all right." And I'm like, I'm just standing there in Parada Bar on a Sunday, <laughs> stinking from the two-night bender before. Yeah, I'm going to go to America. I'm going to go win a world title. And they're like, yeah. I right, pull the other one, Liam. So like, yeah, yeah, sound. But, yeah. But how did how did that actually transpire? So, obviously, training over here is training over here. Do you know what I mean? There's people training up and down the country, fucking all around the world. Yeah. How did it actually transpire that you landed in America? How did that happen? So, um... I started fighting uh, Rumble on the Rock. You know, yeah, Rumble, yeah, you know the Rumble on the Rock. <laughs> yeah, I remember, yeah. All right, so Rumble on the Rock started. Uh, Michael Canyas was like, was was willing to put the platform on so we can we can show our skills off. You know, yeah, he, yeah. he knew that there was something that he need. There needed to be a fight show on the island, right? Was he the MMA. actual he was arbiter the, of that? Yes. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right, right, right. I mean, Rob Staples was it was it was involved in that, but but Michael Canyas was the one that knew. Where this had to go, how to put it on like show, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, he's like, Right, I'm gonna put this show together. I want you to fight on the show. I think I missed the first show. No, is the remember your man pulled out? No, 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 I was, no, no. Walk, I was gonna walk you out, wasn't I? No, the first ever show I missed because I had an I, I, I injured my oh, knee, right, right, and right. I had right, to right. have surgery, so I missed that. And uh, Matt. I forget his surname. So I remember there was a, there was another one where you were meant to fight, and the guy pulled that out. Was that, the that, yeah, yeah, that was the last one. Yeah, that was the last. That was the last show of the uh, of on the Rumble and the Rock that I was I was on. That um, was in t- 2012. That's it. That's it. I remember because we done the halftime show, and, uh, and Michael said to me, "If he wins, obviously if you win, yeah. you have to do all the songs again." And I was like, oh, "Yeah." Fuck, and I remember sitting there with you. I remember feeling like a right cunt the next day because. You came around to the studio. You picked the song that you wanted us to walk you out to. Yeah. I remember sitting there going, Liam, I'm fucking shit myself. Like, do you know what I mean? To get up in front of all them people and rap. And you're like, what the fuck? And then next day I was sitting there going, what a fucking dick. He's got to get up there and fucking fight in front of all them people. I've just got to sing Mate, a fucking it, song. It's a, do you know what I mean? It's a fucking daunting moment. You're like, you're coming out. Uh, you you hear all these yeah. people cheering and shouting. You've got all these people and all their eyes are on you. Yeah, you yeah. fuck up. You do anything, they're anything. on you like yeah. fucking yeah. like jackals. You know it's what I like mean? A fucking rabbit in the headlight. Yeah, exactly. It, but then you got all the lights around you, and that's where you over fucking shine, or you just go. Whoa! That's what I mean. Do you think that's a focus or fold moment? Huh? That's a focus or fold moment. You either yes. focus or you fold. Exactly. Simple as that. Exactly. And it's it's hard. I mean, like. If you're never expecting any of this, like if you was never expecting any of that kind of stuff to happen, you ever thought about that kind of stuff yeah. to happen, then all of a sudden you're thrust into that one. Yeah, and like, all your dreams are coming mate, true. The first time they gave me the microphone, now I went through the first. I was on the prelims, so you didn't have to do no talking on the microphone. Yeah, and after the first round of the tournament, he comes up to me, asks me a question, puts the microphone in front of me, right, and I was like, shit. <laughs> 
forgot I had to do this part. I was like, fuck. All I thought about was fighting. You're saying, more, scared I'm like, of, you know, uh, more scared of public speaking exa- than fighting. Oh, mate. <laughs> people ripped the piss out of me. I was like, mate, I, didn't fuck. I wasn't expecting the microphone. I didn't uh, think about it. But, but yeah, you, you, you kind of... You, but it's one of them. It's, it, if you're comfortable, the same as um, I remember when my first show. Because no matter what, it, it's standing in front of people, standing in front of people. It don't matter what you're doing. If you've got to face the crowd... You got to face the crowd. Do you know what and I mean? you'll catch one person looking oh, yeah. at you, throws you off everything. Oh, fuck like one yeah. person just staring at you. They're all staring at you. But to do what you do, the the, the amount of obstacles in your way, because this is MMA, this isn't boxing, this isn't just using your hands or you know. Oh, like you got everything all thrown. That's in. what I mean. All them elements at the same time, and all the things that could go wrong. Like, how the fuck do you deal with that walking out for say the first time in a foreign audience where where no one knows you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Well, that like was America. That. America. This is what I'm saying. Like, yeah, how the, yeah. how the fuck do you deal with that? Uh, do you just do you just sit there and think like I've trained my mind and my body will follow sort of thing? Just you know, oh, you know what? I knew, I knew where I was going and I knew what I could do. I yeah. knew what I was capable of from all of the fucking shit that I was doing before I even kind of went near a gym, right? Yeah, I knew that I was a fucking tough motherfucker. I just, I knew how to fight, right? <clears throat> But I needed to be shown how to fight. If yeah. you, you understand yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and with Gracie's, like I say, I knew that Rob Staples and Topper was up at the fort. I knew they were there, and I knew they'd won titles. They'd done. they have been over to America. They'd done the sport jiu-jitsu. They'd done all these competitions. Topper won fucking shit loads of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. that was so one they tough knew, bastard, like Joe. Oh, mate, he really <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he was game. Yeah. Even yeah. when I walked into the gym, and I'm like, I'm young, eager. Yeah, yeah. And he's game, and he's like, oh, hello, what have I got here? And he's like, fucking yeah, well, I'll, ro- I'll roll with you, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's what you do, you, you find them. Yeah. A- a- and with him, I knew that they, I could, they could push me and show me what I needed to learn. And plus, I was on a fucking beautiful island to have fun in the process as well. Yeah, Because I was yeah, learning. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so I knew where I was headed with them, but I knew deep down that I could fuck, kick the fuck out of any of them. And Anyone. that's, and that's, it, that, that's it. So And that's just, what you need. You just made a beeline for yourself and said, yeah. this is it, I'm unstoppable, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's in the mind. Yes, it's yeah. all in the mind. Fighting is ninety percent mental, ten yeah. percent physical. Yeah, and and that ninety percent, uh, I I knew what I was capable of. Yeah, I was kind of fucked them all up. So they, so basically, they seen you and they channeled everything that they seen. Obviously, they knew that you could fight and have a row. Yeah. So they just channeled it in the right way and turned around and went, "That's it." But then you knew in your head, I know where I'm going, and that's it. Yeah. But that's what I mean. But what, how how did that the grey area here in between from Jersey to America? What Fill in the blank there. What happened there? So Russ, Russ Alkin, right? Or Alchin, Alkin, I don't pronounce his name right. Russ, um, he knew, uh, he had a friend over in America. Right. And he was like, right, I'm going to go on holiday, Christmas time, going to America. I was like, right, sound, have a great time. Comes back, he's like, I need to see you. He's like, come round for dinner. I've got something to tell you. Right. Like, All right. So he's like, right, my friend is a striking coach and he works for Kurt Pellegrino and he's coaching in his gym. Right. Kurt Pellegrino, UFC fighter, 155, fucking tough motherfucker, right? Yeah. So he's like, he said he you can stay at his house for two weeks and, and come and train and see what you got. So me being the pikey bastard that I am, <laughs> sold everything that I owned. Car, fucking I remember computer, the beamer. bike. <laughs> fuck, yeah, 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 that fucking beam, right? Yeah. Everything. I was like, right, okay, sound. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to fucking yeah, grab it by the fucking horns and yeah. run with it, right? So... Everything goes over there. March supposed to have that fight. That was my, my, my last, my leaving party. With like, I was gonna leave Jersey and put on a fucking show. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy pulls out, fucking whatever. So we just got pissed up. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, right. So yeah, and then and and uh, and yeah. So he comes over and he's like, right, he wants you to come over for two weeks. So I, he picks me up at the airport. And uh, Where's this? this is in this is in America. York? Oh yeah, so I went I went to Jer- I went to Russ's house for the for fucking for dinner. Yeah, and um, and he's like fill out this form the Esther. Oh. So the Esther is the uh, you've got to get you've got to get visas and and elect- yeah, it's yeah. an electronic visa to get into America, right? So now the criminal record question comes up. Yeah, yeah. They're like, have you been in trouble before? I was like, no. So I lied on the fucking visa. <laughs> uh, 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 listen. You tell a little white lie to fucking get where you want to get. Right. Like, we've, we've, if you've got a shady past, you kind of yeah. It's a, but it's all for what fighting. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, it no, that's what I mean. It's not. It's not fucking crime of the century. No, no, yeah. exactly. But that that's what the, they didn't want, right? So lied on the visa, gets the visa and goes over there. This Frank, his name's Frank, right? He picks me up at the airport 
And he's like looking at my bags. And he's like, oh, so you're staying for a couple of weeks. I was like, oh, no. I was like, I'm here for, for, I'm here for three months. And he's like, you best not suck. I was like, mate, I said, you'll be surprised. <laughs> so, so yeah, that was my introduction to America. That's how I got right. from Jersey to America was, was Russ. Like, and that was how long after you walked into the gym over here when you were 28? So I went, I walked in there 2000, 2000, say January 2009, I started full on training. Yeah, yeah. And then March 2012, I was packing my bags and, and flying over to Jersey, uh, flying to America. So that's quick. Yes. That's by any standards fucking quick. Like I say, I knew what I, I knew I could do what I was going to do. So <sighs> working, I worked, worked, I'm still, still fixing it. Yeah. Um, I, I've always worked in construction. So I, I took that work mentality into the gym, gym mentality. Yeah. So like I, I will always graft, I'll turn up and work and I'll straight out there, tires still flat out, yeah. throwing the steel bars and I do this and I go to the gym and I used to train afterwards. Oh, yeah, I was 20, 28, 27, 28, something like that. So I was getting to the point, I was like, I'm getting older, but I could still do a six, eight hour shape shift yeah. and then go do a three hour training session. No bother. Next day, next day, weekend party, go training. <laughs> But I, I knew I couldn't do what I was doing the whole time. So I, the job you knew you had, weren't 100%. Yeah, I, I, I said to, I speak to my coach, he's like, you can take this wherever you want. It. Yeah. So I kind of looked at my job and figured, you know, I, I'm just going to jump into training and start training. I try and coach. I was t coaching. I was doing some things with some, uh, the one of the, the communities for the schools, they'd send all the kids there. There was on a program, like a a, a, a six-week program. In New York? It, no, no, this is this is in Jersey. Oh, right, Yeah, right, this right. is in, like before. So I, I, I started doing all the um, the school programs just to earn a little bit of money. To yeah, try yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to try and fund what I was doing, but I, I, I couldn't do the, the steel fixing and training. So you funded yourself as well? Yes. Everything was all funding myself. So that's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's because like, all you hear people say sponsor, sponsor, sponsor. Like, mate, you you watch too much fucking TV. Yeah, all right, sponsors used to work. They they'd give fighters fifty grand for like, oh, you wear my t shirt. Give yeah, me, yeah, here's yeah, a load yeah. of money, right? Expecting to sell fifty grams of, fifty grams worth of merchandise. Yeah, yeah. MMA fans are fucking tight, motherfuckers, right? They don't <laughs> want to pay for the for the product that they're promoting, so that they don't sell. So like we're giving these fighters all this money, we're not, not even we're not even making yeah. that money. So like, so then the f sponsorship money went down. If you start like later on in the in the fight career, if you start working with a sponsor from the early start, yeah, stay with them. Like it's the same as anything, man. Loyalty. Yeah, but then the same thing is what I'm saying. Early days, though, you were literally funding yourself for your own dream. There was no sponsorship back then. No, and I, oh yeah, get this. I had to sell my own fucking tickets as well. What? You have to sell your own tickets. What in the US? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first first fight, they gave me seventy five tickets, right? <laughs> <laughs> seventy five tickets, right? You had to hustle your own tickets. I was like, I don't even know seventy five people. <laughs> I was like, fucking man, I've just got here. They were like, you have to sell these tickets. If you don't sell, these are my tickets, right? So whatever I don't sell you comes won't. off my purse. So I didn't sell. For, I think I sold about twenty tickets or something like that, right? Fucking so they fuck all of those tickets. Came off my fight purse. So off, I think my first fight was two and two, right? And like fucking, they took $3,000 off me. So I got paid less than what, like. How the fuck does that work? Well, I suppose that's your entry in the game, isn't it? That's, it's it's the fucking, rules, isn't it? It's the fucking jet. Like, if you want to fight, that's what you that's what you have to do. Get, the, Everyone's. So that's what I'm saying. So you sold up everything over here. Literally so the everything. Lot. Everything. For a chance. And not even necessarily a chance, just to go and meet someone who thinks you might have a shot. Yes. <laughs> I took, a, it was a fucking wild stab in the dark. I didn't know who he was. I didn't even know what he looked like picking me up at the airport. He comes rocking up some Jeep fucking, I'm like looking and I think, I think that's him from the pictures. Some big nose he had on him. <laughs> right. And I was like, I think that's him. And yeah, Liam, Frank, sound, get in. <laughs> so, right. Here we go then. That's fucking brilliant. Though. Uh, yeah. But then so... Obviously, so he's seeing what you're made of, basically, through um, Russ, was it? Yeah, Russ through Russ. Did. Russ yeah. Russ didn't told him my name. Right. And, um, and he was like, yeah, bring him over. But when I got there, it was like, no one really paid too much attention. Like, they had all their fighters. Like, the gym is all their fighters. In yeah, there. yeah. But I think about, 
Maybe 11 fighters or something like that. And you're so, literally an Englishman in New York. Like, you're literally a... You don't stranger. know anyone. I'm yeah. a fucking stranger. No one knows. I, I'm literally just finding my own feet, like, literally. So uh, I've gone in there, and I'm just fucking handing all of them the fucking beatings. And I, I, I think the first day was... The first session was jujitsu, And I rolled with their brown belt, right? Mm. And he's a big, tough... He sent the tough one over straight away. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I submitted him seven times for five minutes. He was fucking amazed, especially because I had a blue belt wrapped around my waist, right? <laughs> so he was like pissed to send another one over, tapped him out left, right, and center. Their black belt tapped them out as well. I was like fucking enjoying this. Like <laughs> then MMA came. I was like, this is what I came for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. they were like set, and, they, and I mean, the guys always like George Sullivan fights for the UFC, fights at one seventy. He was around about two hundred pounds, two hundred and five pounds. I was only a scrawny little fucker when I went over there. Like I was like, I was light. Yeah, what did you weigh when you when you Mate, landed I, over? I remember Sean Lomas, uh, the ICO British Championship, whatever. I stood on the scales with my jeans on, and I still weighed like ninety one kilos or something like that. It's ninety three kilo limit. Fucking hell, man! Right. So they're smaller guys, and I wasn't big. I wasn't as big as what I am now, but I I went in there to throw down with these guys and I threw down, fucking beat the shit out of them. Still, no one would be. I was like, look, get me a fucking fight, man. I'm, I'm here. And because I would already had done that fight camp for March, yeah, I was already in mad shape because I've done a fight camp. He yeah. cancelled, went over there. Yeah. I was still in, so I was I was ready to go. Yeah, yeah, but nothing. They didn't do anything until like I think it was. I I, I had March. I had three months there to July. I think I was supposed to leave them by, and they finally sorted me a fight out by the end of my first three months, and that was against Walter Howard in the. Um, in Ring of Combat. Was that the, the prelims for the... No, no, the Ring of Combat. This was like the smaller show. Right, First right. First time in Atlantic City in... Uh, where was it? I can't remember the... Um, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, the, that was Tropicana. The first... In the That's Tropicana it. Yeah, Casino. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tropicana so, Casino. So that was your first fight in America? First fight, yeah. Right, right. And as we're driving up, my coach was like, you know, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, all these like... They're, they're all no fought, pressure, like... They've all been fighting here. I'm like, dude... <laughs> Now you want to hit me with that one driving up to this fight, fucking... Yeah, yeah fucking hell. Nah. Ooh. So that was your first... Obviously, that that's that's something I have to ask, is, again, fighting to a stranger crowd, that must be a fucking weird one. Because you know when you're home, you're home. You know, yes. The worst case scenario is the worst case scenario. Do you know what I mean? Who gives a fuck? Do you know what I mean? But when you, no one knows you and you're out there on your own, yeah. do you reckon... Do you see that as a positive thing now? Or... Like, do you, how would you explain it? Uh, you know what? So, I didn't even, I didn't even pay attention to it. Didn't blink. I didn't. If if I'd have sat back and be like, "Am I here? I'm over here on my own." Yeah. I'm doing this on my own. Like, I don't know anyone. I'm just trying. Like, if I'd have sat there and thought about that, then I wouldn't have got where I was getting exactly, as quick yeah. as what I got. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I don't care. I mean, like anyone else who wants to join in, let's go. Right. Like, <laughs> I know where I'm going, and yeah. I'm. I'm going to go that direction and just keep fucking doing it. After, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get there. But that's insane to think that... Because that, that was what? Early 2012, would it have been? Or yeah, 2013 so uh, at this point? No, no, so 2012. Still 2012 at 2012. this point? 2012, this is still 2012. Maybe March, April, May, June. So maybe June I fought in, in, in Ring of Combat in, of 2012. And then what, ap- what <clears> happened <throat> after Ring of Combat? Does that, when did Bellaswa actually get... Did you get into Bellator? So, after the Ring of Combat, so there was the Walter Howard fight. Um, oh, yeah, this one. Man, he knocked me down in the first round of the jab. Right. Right. I think I lost the first round, so I'll come back in the... But my corner, Kurt and Frank, are screaming in, like, fucking... Punch, kick, front, left, kick, do it. And I'm like... I, I, I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. You yeah. know, they're yelling at me in their American accent, fucking freaking out. So I've gone back, sat down... And he's like, fucking, right, you've lost the first round. He's like, you have to try and win the second and the third round. And I was like, is it not easier if I just knock him out? He's like, <laughs> well, if you can do that, do that. I said, well, just shut the fuck up then. Like, relax. That's I, the thing, yeah. I need you boys fucking calm behind me. I said, yeah, if you're fucking stressing yeah. out and freaking out, you, you uh, that's going to make me freak out. Yeah. Hence the fucking round we've just had, right? Yeah. So I've gone out there 15 seconds into the next round. I fucking hit with a right body, fucking left, come up with a left hook out cold 15 seconds I'll turn around it's like 
That's all I needed to do. Yeah, honestly, to me, it's still, every time I fucking, even when I think about it, or hear about it, because I never put the two and two together, and I've known you since fucking, what, 2000 fucking 10, 11, whatever yeah, I met you, do you know what I mean? So like, Maybe even I, before then. No, but I never put them two together. I, ne- I never knew, I never, I never understood how the fuck, I've heard it through Corky and other people. Do you yeah. know what I mean, what happened on the, but I never knew about, you know, um, Russ and stuff like that. I never knew that, the, I never fucking knew that you're out there on your own. Yeah. I thought it was more of a, you know, like, you've got friends out there. No, Do man, I, mean? I, I knew nobody. Not, th- uh, this Frank guy. Th- that was all I knew. But then, so I had to fight in Ju- I had to fight in June against Walter. And then uh, my visa, it was time because you're only allowed to like three months to yeah, stay yeah, three yeah, months, yeah. you've got to leave, right? So I was like, listen, I've I got to bounce. Like, and um, oh. yeah, I'll let me finish this first. So I um, came back to England and uh, I, I came back for a month and uh, I had no money because, I mean, obviously that first ring of combat, they never paid no money for that, right? I had no money to pay for my flight, so they were like putting air miles together to bring me back over there. Finally managed to bring me over, and I was there for three another three months. Right. In the three months, the summertime was quite quiet. A couple of fighters had some fights going on, but um, they didn't they didn't do anything with me. So I was like, "Listen, Kurt, I need something to happen." All the drama that goes on in Behind I was in I was in Jersey like Jersey Shore, yeah. yeah? So that's where I was staying was Jersey. So there was a whole load of fucking stuff that goes on. New Jersey. Yeah, New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, yeah. People banging people they shouldn't be, fucking this, that, and the other, like fucking inside the gym, fucking romances, like, oh, they're, they're, they're messing around. I didn't give a fuck. But there was all that going on inside. I didn't care. So you just sidestepped the drama just to focus so on I, business? Yeah, I, was, I didn't fight, fly 5,000 miles, leave all my friends yeah, and family around. to fuck around with yeah. all this bullshit. I yeah. was, I've been doing that last fucking God knows how many yeah, years. Yeah, past that. Now I'm here yeah. to hit focus, right? So all of that happened and all that got us is like, you're not doing anything with me. Like, I need to find someone who's going to fucking focus on what, I, what I've got to do. Yeah, your dream. Yeah. He's like, give me five minutes. Fucking sitting in the gym. He comes back. I've got your contract with Bellator. Second biggest organization in, the, in, in, in America. I was like, fucking sound. That quick. That quick. Five so minutes. So all you had to do was put your foot down. That was it. It was all I had to do was threaten to leave and fucking any... The contract he got me... He's like, oh yeah, I fucking signed this contract. It's fucking, it, it's it's a it's a it's a good contract, right? No, it wasn't a good contract. Like, I've been held to a fucking bogus contract from fucking bogus fucking uh, promoters, which we all knew that fucking existed. Yeah, right? but at the same time, that you're literally on your ass. You you've got nothing other than your dream. Yes. What else are you gonna do? Anyone would sign. Exactly. So I signed it, right? Yeah. I didn't know what the fuck I was signing. I got it checked out. They were like, oh, yeah, this is a good contract. Fucking so I signed it. Fucking yeah. bullshit contract. Fucking, I've been stuck on the same contract for a long, long, long time. I had 15 fights on my contract at one point, right? Like, who the fuck am I going to fight 15 times? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there, there isn't yeah. fucking, it was, it was, that, all I was was a small fucking, they didn't know who the fuck I was. So they just tried to give you a contract, shut your yeah, fuck up, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, right. just, I just give them this. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So basically, so I got this contract signed and then I had to come back. So remember that little white lie that I told about in the... Um, the visa. visa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when it fucking came up, man, right? Oh, because then you're actually employed. Yeah, yeah so yeah. now I had to go for a proper visa. So I went to London. I have to get a waiver for like to pass all, the, all my criminal convictions yeah, and yeah. stuff. So I'm stood in London. I had to send some fat dude with bald head glasses, give him all my paperwork. And he's like... Oh, Convictions. I had to get my criminals like the yeah, yeah, the, the printout. Right? Yeah, yeah. Gave him that. He said, "Oh, so you have gotten you have got convictions here." Yeah. I was like, well, "Yeah." He said, "You said no in here." I said, "Well, I thought it was something something else." And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I didn't, I didn't really know what the fuck I was. I was just trying to get fucking in America. Well, to be honest though, there is, you know, like we have parish hall over here. Yeah. And then they have, you know, like county court in the UK. You could turn around and say, well, fucking, do you know what I mean? I didn't know it was a national fucking crime to have it, a fucking fight. Do you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. And I'm getting paid for the fucking shit. Exactly. Do you know what that. I mean? Well, yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so he put all the things in the system and it said no. He's like, the computer said no. As soon as he said no, that was it. I didn't give a fuck what he was saying the last fucking five minutes after that. He handed me some form that was just like, oh, I was like, fuck. 
some little fat prick here in the fucking an office with a glass in front of me has just told me like he's stopped my, my dream. dream. Yeah, my dream. That fat fucking prick is never going to go anywhere in his life. Like yeah. apart from this fucking little cubicle, right, <laughs> has just stopped me from becoming a world champion. I was like, cheers, mate. Fucking offer. I walked through London for about three hours, hands in my pockets, kicking a stone round like just fucking human. Didn't even know where the fuck I was. Just walking, yeah. like went and met my sister. It was a miserable, miserable few days. I thought. My past has fucking hit me and now I can't fucking move forward, right? I think it was Friday night, about two o'clock in the morning, looked on the internet, on, on my email, and I saw an emb- uh, an email from the embassy. You're not allowed in, you're never allowed to step foot in American soil again, right? I was like, fucking hell, I need to see that one. Didn't see me in the mail again. Checked it on the Saturday and there was like, you have now been accepted for your visa, and I'm thinking, well, hang on, mate, you just told me fucking I can't set foot on American yeah, yeah, soil. Yeah. Now you're telling me. So I was waiting till Monday morning to phone the embassy, right? And uh, I'm like, fucking nine o'clock. Hello. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Hey, this is the American embassy. I was like, <laughs> there's my American <laughs> accent. <laughs> right. I said, ah, yeah, this is the American embassy. I was like, all right, mate. I said, listen, I've just got this email, right? <laughs> the most you, British response ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm like, I said, I've just been in the office and you've said no, but now you've said an email saying I have got it. I says, what, what's going what on? Fuck, I, yeah. Have I got a visa or that? This is the US embassy. We don't make mistakes, sir. And I'm sorry. <laughs> so what you're saying is I've got my visa. He's like, yes. I was like, fucking nice one, mate. Uh, yeah. Um, right. I didn't know what to say to the student on the phone. I was like, right, cheers. <laughs> then that, then the email come through, like sort out the courier to get yeah, his yeah. passport sent off. I was fucking buzzing going to America. So, so what, it, what happened there then? How come the fucking computer said no and then all of a sudden, do you reckon it was because of the contract or the... I think signing with Bellator, they had, they've had they got lawyers involved in it and, yeah, and yeah. I think that definitely helped um, push things on with, with, with what I was, where I was going. But there's an irony there, isn't there? That the worst fucking contract you could have signed was the very thing that got you into the... Into the Ameri- into That's the fucking States. insane. Yeah. That's bit, a strange twist of fate. I know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. if you'd have turned around and gone, fuck that contract, do you know what I mean? What would have happened? Well, it wouldn't be signed for fucking... But that's what young fighters... All young fighters want to do is they want to fight. Yeah. And you'll hear them when they're starting. And I said exactly the same. I don't care how much I get paid. I just want to fight. I just want to fight. Yeah. Which is the most fucking stupidest thing you could ever fucking say. Knowing now what, what I know, know. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. right? Yes, you do want to fight because you want to get yourself out there. You want to put yourself and, and show... put get the Let skills. people view yeah. what you can yeah. do. So, and you don't really care at the beginning. So when they're fucking taking, I was pissed when they took the fucking cut off me, but I'm not going to lie. Like I, was fucking, I was pissed when they took the cut off my wages with, yeah, the, uh, yeah. with the tickets. Like, But but still, but I was buzzing. But then you buzzing. sit there and you think it's a price to pay to be where well, I Especially when I beat that fucking prick in one minute and 14 seconds. Who was that, the first one? In Anton Talamantes. Anton Talamantes? Ta- yeah, the first Anton one. Anton yeah. Talamantes. That was in 78 seconds. So, yeah, 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 so yeah. seventy-eight seconds um, by TKO. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so then, but but under the contract, how many people did you have to fight after him? You so every time I won, it multiplied. So that's why I ended up with so many fights. That's ah, uh, so that's the shit part of the contract. Yeah, the fucking right. shit bit. That's in the, the little fucking the clause. Yeah, yeah that's what listen. You, all these yeah. fighters out there, if you ever want to get into this fucking game, right? I'm going to look at the camera. You want to get into this fight, check the contract. Make sure you have management behind you that's trust you, that you trust. They have your interests, right? At heart. They're the ones that you need, right? So don't be fucking signing all these bullshit contracts. Like I say, I, I went into the game at 29 years old. I've been there, done what I fucking, what I wanted to do, who I was, was that person. I'm just going off to do something else on a little adventure. But they exploit. But this is what I'm saying. They exploit that very nature of the fighter. The fighter wants to fight, show their skills, and obviously show that they're the best in the world. That's what fighting is. You want to be the best. There's no second best fighter. There's no you know like I want to be third. Do you well, know I mean, no, you want to be the best. Number the two don't make them different. Sort of fighting. D- d- this is what I'm saying. So like they exploit that very nature. Do you know what I mean? But then so after that was um, who was that? Anton Talamant. Talamantes, yeah. Talamantes, and then the second fight was with Bo Chibale. Triple A? Yeah, Bo Triple A. So Bo's twenty seven second knockout. Yeah, right. So the the story behind Bo Triple A. So when uh with Frank, 
and Kurt Pellegrino, the fucking Jersey Shore saga. After my debut in Bellator, I um, so yeah, I beat Tal- Anton Talamantes and the referee, a big Dan Mergliata. You know, big Dan, the ball guy, ball guy, oh, yeah, 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 fucking yeah, yeah. sound dude, right? Yeah, yeah. So as I'm walking along, he's like Liam. He was like fucking awesome to performance. He was like, I'm sort of I fought on a Thursday night. Yeah. Right. And he's like, I've got a seminar going on in Homedale on Tuesday. He's like, you need to be there. It's at Henzo Gracie's in Homedale, right? Right. So he told me this. My coach, Frank, was walking out. He knew Frank from before, right? Yeah. So then he was like, I don't know if he wanted to tell him or if he wanted to keep it fucking. Yeah. yeah but then yeah. he turned around and was like, yeah, yeah, like told him about it, right? So then Tuesday comes along. I was like, listen, we got this, uh, we got this seminar. Went to the seminar and, uh, as soon as I walked in, Hollis Gracie was there and Henzo Gracie was there. Hollis was like, Boha, I see you fight on Tuesday, uh, on, on Bellator Thursday. They were like, I was like, yeah, 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 that, that was me. And Henzo looked at me and they knew like, because uh, Braulio, Braulio Estima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Braulio Estima is a massive name with Henzo. He yeah, knows, yeah, yeah. Familia, you come train with me in the city and the boys on Thursday. And I was like, that's the fucking right. Gracie's. Like, That's the <laughs> great, the fucking godfather of jujitsu, yeah, yeah. Henzo Gracie. Talking to me like, Boha, you come to the city on Thursday. So I fought on Thursday, seminar Tuesday, and then I was riding my first bus ride into the city um, for, for training session on a Thursday, right? Trained all the way through. Then the Bo Triple A fight comes in, right? So now Frank got a little bit fucking pissed and jealous and that I was training in the city. And uh, then this is my little bit of drama. Mm. Six o'clock in the morning comes, pack your fucking bags, get the fuck out of my house. Yeah. What, by Frank? By Frank. The one dude that I only fucking knew in America, like, put me up, fucking kicked me out of his house because things wasn't fucking going his way. Jealousy, fucking... There was a whole lot of fucking mixture of uh, emotions. Yeah, yeah. Of, like uh, of, of me training with somebody else when I came over there, which I, I came there to train with Yeah, him. but at the same time, he also fucked you over. Yes. In that sense with the contract and yes. not only that, but so, yeah. That's, you know what I'm saying? There's fucking Listen, me in every sense of... Exactly, in, yeah, of, of, course, of course. So, I mean, like, and I, I knew what he'd done. He yeah. knew what he'd done. So, what? I, like, listen, I'm, lo- I'm a loyal, I'm loyal, right? yeah. yeah. But if you're fucking running around telling people like, oh, I'm the retirement, I was, I was his retirement plan and things like that, right? Then I'm a little bit of yeah, fucking. Like, hold the yeah, fuck that's on. not gonna work. It's like I didn't work. fly over to from do, left what I left behind to come do what I do to be treated like this way. So yeah. I was like, yeah. thank you very much, kindly. Like I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get somewhere. As politely you know I mean? as I can, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I didn't want to, like, I don't want to cause offence to you, like, because I'm fucking greatly appreciative of what you're doing. Yeah, but at the same time, if you've just <clears> been <throat> noticed by the, the fucking godfather of you know, everything that you train for. That's, you know, it, obviously I can't comment because it's the first time I've, I've ever heard of that. But at the same time, him kicking out you out the gaff, that's a bit of a shit fucking move by any standards. Yeah. You know, yeah. but anyway. But so after that, it was onwards, onwards and upwards. Cause well, I was fighting Bo Triple A in fucking three weeks. Right. And Prior to him kicking me out of the, of the gaff. Where did you go when he kicked you out? So, uh, so I mean, I was homeless. So I had all my stuff in the, in, in my mate, back of my mate's pickup. Sat in New Jersey bus station and I was phoning people from back home and thinking, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, I don't know what. Then, uh, so I'd met, uh, met more, one of his friends. Um, I'd met him fucking drinking or whatnot. Yeah, I'll have another one. Fill up my shares, buddy. Yeah, I met one of his friends and uh, and I phoned, he phoned me up and he's like, oh, what are you up to? I was like, well, I'm just going up to the city. I've got to figure out like where what I can. What to do, yeah. Oh, I've, got, I've got one here. He's like, he's like, what's going on? And I told him, he's like, dude, take your bags, drop them off in the garage, go to the city, do what you want to do, and fucking come back and we'll, we'll figure it out, right? I said, like, what are you saying? He was like, mate, I've got a four-bedroom house and it's just me and my wife. I'm like, dude, Rich Boniface is his name and Laurie Vogel, right? Two of the fucking greatest people that saved my life in America <laughs> right at that fucking very moment. I was like, mate. So yeah, dropped my bags off. Fucking dropped. Went how did you, how did you know them? Just like, just prior. like what, through Frank, right, so right, one right, of the right, people right. that like the families that I met. Right, right, right. Um, right. Laurie Vogel actually owns the um, the the suntan suntan place, right? 
So if you ever watch Jersey Shore and they go to fucking, we're going to Sundown and we're yeah, going to Suntan. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was her Suntan lotion plate, uh, Suntan fucking studio that they used to go to, like. So she was big in, in Tom's River. So literally on the last leg, on the last leg, when you were literally fucked over, you just got a, one last chance. Yes. Yeah, by yeah, these yeah. people. I mean, I, I didn't, I was asking my friend to fucking, if I could set up a tent and his, his dad was a fucking groundsman for the cemetery, right? I was asking, hey, can I just pitch a tent up somewhere in the woods? Like, you'll <laughs> never fucking know. Oh, bro, I can't. I'd love to help you out. <laughs> like, I was, I didn't know what the fuck to do. I knew what I wanted to do and I knew where I would go. But this, the roof over the head, no fucking, money, that's a, no, no that's work. A, but the scariest thing there is, America's not exactly the nicest place on the planet if you've got fuck all. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Especially if you've got no friends, no family, no nothing. It's not exactly a, a very forgiving place. No. It's not like Jersey, where, or, you know, the UK in, in some respects, where you can sit there and go, I know so-and-so, do you know what I mean? Or I can get by on this, that, and the other. You're literally fucked. You're, you're well on your own. Yes. So, uh, what are their names again? Laurie, Laurie Vogel and Rich Boniface. Fucking like, fair play to you. <laughs> yeah, they, they were fucking... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, man, they, they really did step up in there. So. And then, so that's before the fight with... Um, so yeah, Bo, Bo. Bo, right? That's it, right. So I remember speaking to my mate Gary St. Ledger, and, uh, and he's like, I think it was the week before, I didn't have know who I was going to fucking have as a cornerman. And we was, where was it? Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona, was. yeah. So I was like, Igor Gracie. I was like, Igor, do, do, would you mind fucking like cornering me? And you know, I had this one guy and that other. But I, he's like, yeah, of course, no brother, no brother. So we fucking he flew out. Me and Igor flew out there, Phoenix. But um, Gary was like, what are you going to do to this guy? <clears throat> so I was like, right, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna punch him in the face, knock him out. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna get paid, and I'm gonna go get laid, <laughs> right? And he's like, looked at me, and like, that's exactly what I fucking did. <laughs> 27 seconds, went in there, banged that motherfucker out, went out, fucking got paid and got laid. Fucking great night. Hello, oh, no, Phoenix. It's brutal, honestly, you know what Old mean? town Scottsdale. <laughs> Scottsdale. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking great town. <laughs> that's what I mean. So, so then, but, but that's what I'm saying. That the, the weirdest thing in there is, is, is you've already given up everything essentially twice. Well, that, see, they're, they're, that's no, the journey. Is, the, the this is the journey. No, but this is what I'm saying. The, the journey, that the, this is why I wanted you on the show, is to show the fact that it wasn't just as clear-cut as what people think. No. People have the assumption that you're over here, you were good, and then you got sponsored by someone massive and got put up in a fucking hotel or an apartment or four-bedroom no, or whatever no, no. the fuck it was. None and then, of that. And then, yeah, they don't understand the struggle yeah. that you actually went through. Do you know what I mean? I and painted, the sacrifice. I painted this, this chick's house where I wanted to go to California and compete in... Uh, was the, the the worlds? I think it was the worlds in in in, in California in right. the big fucking triangle. It was f- a cool as fuck place. Big. It's on a studio. Uh, it's on a college campus. Right. Pyramid shaped building. Like you walk in there and it's it's fucking sound right. But yeah, I wanted to I wanted to go over there and compete. So no money. Didn't get fuck all from any fights or anything. So I was like, let let me put. She's like, I need my paint my house painted. So, all right, so it's them old fucking tiled. They're not quite a big roller, just a little roll of size tiles, right? All the way around old house, you want to paint yellow. Right. I had to paint this whole fucking house with, I think it was a five inch roller, <laughs> right? Two coats. <laughs> fucking. So sorry, I want to go to California. <laughs> fucking, I was there for days and I'd do like a fucking weed in and clear a swimming pool out, like just to get some money. So I got some money, give him some money for, for the Frank, some money for rent, yeah. and then fucking I fucked off to California for a week to fucking go compete. Right. That that's the type of things you have to do. If you want something if you want anything in life, like Yeah, you have to work, obviously. To work. But then above that, that's you know, past work, that's past sacrifice. Most people would have given up fucking out at the first hurdle, let alone the sixth that you've just explained, do you know what I mean? But the the third fight, Najim is it Wally? Najim Wally, yeah. Wally, yeah. yeah. The that Afghan was, rock. That was um He was a tough motherfucker, him. Was that the same was that the same year? Was yeah, so oh so yeah, yeah, oh. Bo Triple A, I think I can't quite remember the name the, the months, right? So maybe I think there was only like maybe a few weeks in yeah, between yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bo Triple A was first, then I was fighting Phoenix, then I was flying out. Maybe I think it was in Atlantic City I was fighting Najee and Wally and the Revel. And that's where maybe a few weeks afterwards. Right. But yeah, so that was like that was the first year of being in Bellator. Three but that's, fights. Uh, you finished in the first round with an armbar. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. then a few elbows to the face as well. <laughs> Thirteen of them. <I> <laughs> <laughs> Twenty fifteen, 
and then that was your debut into Bellator. No, no, no. 20, no, no 2012, in... I was already in Bellator. Oh, no, 2013. This, this was your fight, your title fight. No, 2015 was a title fight. So, yeah, against um, Emmanuel Newton. Yeah, but I yeah. had so that I had to do the three fights, which the prelim fights. Yeah, that's it. To yeah. basically build up to get like who who a is shot. he? It's a yeah. fucking dude with a nipple tattoo who's come from a little island, right? <laughs> so so, ba- so basically, fucking, I've now come over there. I've had to do the three fights. Every single one of my fights because there was like they happened quite quickly. They yeah. put them onto the main card in previews in between their main fights, right? right so right, right. now people are knowing. So I've had to come back. My visa's run out. I've had to come back, renew my visa. Yeah, because every time you have to come back every, uh, mate, is it every months? two years or something like that. Now a year, year and a half, two years, That's two it, years, yeah. two years, right? Yeah. So now I've come come back. Once I've gone back to America, they're like, right. And I came back and I was training. I came back to Jersey, actually. and I, 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 Maybe I was here for f- three or four months or something like that. But I was training with LH Fitness, Big Dave Lunn. Yeah. Oh, ben, yeah, yeah, like yeah. them boys. Fuck them boys. Help me get, keep being Ben and Dave are check. fucking legends like, in that fucking <clears throat> yeah, department. Man. Fucking but that, that's what I'm saying. This place has got fucking so many good coaches. So, and much so many good tra- Yeah, man. Yeah. On a little place. Yeah. So, yeah, I come back to train with them. And then... Uh, yeah, then when I went back to, to, to America, that's when they were putting me into the tournament. They were like, and that, right. and that, that was the main one in, in 2015 when Emmanuel Newton? No, so I had to do three rounds the of the tournament. The three rounds first? I think that was 2014. That was the summer tournament. So you have to win every single one to even yeah, get the into the... Yeah, the 100 grand fucking tournament. That's it, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was the... Um, so the first round was... Uh, Mike Musatelli. 22-second knockout, that one. <laughs> yeah. So you literally just walked in and Mike Tyson to everyone. Yes. You know I mean? <laughs> Never passed the first round. Yeah. But. Yeah. And then after that, so when you actually got to the point where, right, you're in line now. So you're against Emmanuel Newton, obviously. So you had to go against the, you know, them three fights first. Now you're there. Yeah. You know what I mean, so that's sort of the, the point where you have to overcome to carry on, obviously, to have the title. Yeah. What's that like? Just, just... We've been through the pressure of the fact that you're in a strange place. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. you've got fuck all, let's be honest. Do you know what I mean? And obviously balls are still, do you know what I mean? Because I'd have given up a fucking long time ago. Do you know what I mean? As would 99% of the people watching. That's the point where it's either make or break. Yeah. Literally. Do you know what I mean? What? So you're, you're walking in and you're only, you know, like, you're still fresh-faced in that sense. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, I, was, I was only... I'd only been, I left here 2012 and 2015 and fighting for a world title. So, the world it, title. The world title. Yeah. And I hadn't fucking done a stitch of anything beforehand. So, like, you'll see, you'll see people spending years and years and years in the gym getting to a point of where they want to, oh, I'm ready for fighting for a title. Been training 10 years. I do, you think, do, do you think, just on a side note, do you think, I don't know how to put this, fight is a. A natural, or do you think they can be trained? Do you think it's in you, or do you think it, it can be harnessed? This is a good question, right? It has to be in you. Yeah. You 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 have to enjoy putting fucking beatings on people, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And it ain't like so not when in I a start, bad way, not in a, nah. not in a sadistic way. Like, no. Yeah. So when I started, like I, I had a lot of street fights. Yeah. I enjoyed fighting, right? That was my. Living in in Andover and the towns I grew up in, there was like right near squatty camps, right? Yeah. yeah. And these and squatties love a fight. Exactly. Yeah. So I could go into town. If you didn't get laid, you'd fucking just be like fucking find a group of lads and be like, right, you motherfuckers, let's go and have a punch up, yeah. right? And be nothing. It would be nothing of it. It wouldn't bat an eyelid, you know. They fight, you fight, fucking go home. You win, you lose. That's it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? No, no, there was no, no they were never lost. <laughs> never fucking lost. And that was what was amazing. That was what kept pushing me on. Fuck me, I'll fight these dudes and never lost that one, never lost, no. No, but that's what I'm saying is, is sometimes you look at you look at people, same as Tyson, do you know what I mean? Like Mike Tyson. Um, Costa Domano obviously knew, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He knew it was in him, it was there, do you know what I mean? He did. You could take someone in the gym every single day and teach them every single combo, every single lock, every single everything, but if it's not there, yes, it's just not there. Do you know what I mean? You have to have that 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 You have that to have it inside, yes. You, you mean? have, you have to, to inside you to, to want, to fucking hurt somebody. Yeah, to break someone else down. Yeah. But, the, but this is what I was about to get into about the um, the the science of it. Do you know what I mean? So like, even though that sounds bad to normal people, they'll sit there and go, what the fuck, he wants to hurt people? It's not that. The science behind it 
is what actually is more of a driver. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, so two people having a fisty cuffs, it's not going to last, but what, 90 seconds? Street fight. No, no, street fight, yeah. yeah street, one punch yeah. fucking down, no, yeah. 90, 90 seconds is a long street fight, do you know what I mean? So, like, but when you actually, when, when it's already there in you, do you know what I mean? And you actually take it to the next level and you actually make the sacrifices that you did, do the stuff that you did, at that point, that's where violence is really your best friend. Yes. That is where it is everything that, you know, encompasses everything that you are. Do you know what I mean? So, like, obviously I've had a fight. I was, I was raised fighting just like you. Do you know what I mean? But the difference being is I never done anything anywhere near that you would do. Do you know what I mean? Because I never realised that you could harness it in that way. I just seen it as a mechanism where you could say, if you come to me, you'll regret it. That's yeah. it. That's, that's kind of my thing. Do you know what I mean? Other than that, it doesn't go beyond. But you went beyond. Yeah. You actually sat there and went... Well, I'm good at it. I like it, and here I am. And not only that, you sacrifice everything to get there. Yes, that's you know a huge jump that most people don't see. That's what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean it's a weird one because most people sit there and go, "Ah, it's a big guy that just turned around and said I like hurting people." No, it's it, it, that's not the way it is. No. It's 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 a reverse sort of psychology in that in that sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like an like and hurting people isn't you know like a, a sadistic thing. You have to like to hurt people and entertain yeah. people at the same time. That that's that's what we do. do you know what I mean? Sorry, that's 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 what fighters do. But like with that thing, with the um, Emmanuel Newton thing, and then it, what did it? In that fight, you set the record for the number yeah. of submission attempts in Bellator history. Yeah, it was it sixteen, seventeen, or something? I think, it, I think it was eleven. Or oh, was it eleven? I count, right. I'm count, jumping Coming, the gun yeah. there. Something like that. But you know what? The only reason why there were so many submission attempts is my knee was fucked. So I couldn't literally close a triangle. I had no strength for Yeah, but I have to ask you this now. Do you prefer the submission or the knockout? I don't know. I, 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 I love knocking people out. Yeah, right? yeah. I like fucking hitting them and feeling yeah, them yeah, melt. Yeah, yeah. Right? Once... You know when you've hit somebody, like yeah, you can yeah, hit them yeah. a couple of times and they're like yeah. solid. Yeah. But when you hit them and it's just like, oh, hang on, let them. Boom. Yeah, and yeah. you're like, and you just, you feel. You see them the lights fall. go out. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy that. But also, I enjoy tying somebody up and knowing that they can't get out and knowing that the fucking, their next move, yeah. when they move, because I'm pushing them. Oh, I've got a plan of where where they want to go. It's like a python. Do you know what I mean? Oh, the mate, more yeah. you fucking struggle, the but more this, you're going to wrap up. This is jujitsu. Yeah. And the beauty of jujitsu. And a lot of my submissions were done when I was like white, uh, blue belt, purple belt. Like, I only got my brown belt when I went to fight Tito. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but to me, didn't belts in jujitsu didn't interest me. Like, purple belt, tapping out black belts. Hang on a minute. Tito never got tied up. Tito never got submitted, like... Had and never you were been a brown belt when you went in with Tito. Yeah. And you're the only person to tie him up. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, twice. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. So it's so obviously that was um 2015, obviously Emmanuel Newton. Yeah. So that's submission. Yeah, the, the most whatever. Yeah, so that was obviously that you set the record for submissions. How did you actually win that fight? Uh was that it was by a, submission. No, 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 no. It was uh I don't know if it was a unanimous decision or yeah, it was a unanimous right, decision. Right, right, right. And then the then you had the title. And yep. then your first title defence was against a Hall of Famer. T Ortiz. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you couldn't have been thrown into the deep end anymore if you fucking tried. No. And I was <laughs> you know I, mean? like, I think it was ten I was ten and oh at the point of fighting Tito. Right. Yeah. How the fuck again, you have to go back, how the fuck do you prep? For defending your title, because you've just got the title, how the fuck do you prep um, defending your title against the Hall of Famer? Because Tito's legendary, like, do you know what I mean? He's a, he's a mm. fucking animal. Yeah. And again, he's never been tapped. He's, you know, like, no one's ever got him. So how the fuck did, how, and how do you wrap your brain around that? I didn't, mate. I just fucking didn't give a fuck who I was. I knew what I was doing. But at the point of where, when I was fighting Tito, my body was starting to feel all these fucking, like, Bearing in mind, so I just had eight fights in two years, mm. right? And that's taking its toll. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I was literally in the fight. Because every camp's different. Every, I uh, mean, yeah, every, ca every camp, every camp may last eight weeks, mm. but it was every eight weeks that I was fighting. It was every, like every couple of months, I think, it was when, when I was going through the tournament. Yeah. Um, and I'd do, the, I'd do the fight camp. And then after I finished, I did a fight. I liked to have a drink. I liked yeah, to have yeah. a bit of a relaxing time. But I was never able to do the relaxing time. So it literally was a week off. 
maybe have a couple of beers, whatever, and do a, disappear for a couple yeah, of days. Yeah, nothing, like, nothing, nothing, nothing to the extreme where I used to. Like, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. But then and I'd be straight back into the gym. And, it, and, and I never paid attention. Yes, I was fighting Tito, but I didn't want to like be, oh, yeah, I'm fighting Tito. It was hard not to, like, you're sitting there doing press releases and yeah, it's like, fucking yeah, Tito Ortiz. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I watched him fucking smoking a joint with my mate. I could beat him. Like, yeah, yeah. that's how I met Tito, like, looking at him on the TV screen. Yeah, but you but, don't want to sit there and make him no, into, yeah, put him no, on a pedestal. Exactly, because yeah. at the end of the day, I know I'm going to beat you're him. fighting. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not like, a, but they, again, that's, that's, that's the crazy thing. Because even though you know, and I know, and everyone else knows, he's still a Hall of Famer. He's still fucking Tito Ortiz. Do you know what I mean? That man's a bad That's why man. I fucking high-fived him after I beat him. No, like. but straight after that, the beauty about that match as well, not only because everyone over here was going fucking ballistic, like when you won that, that was, you know, everyone in Jersey, do you know what I mean, was up in arms. Um, it was fucking amazing. And then, But him, you know what I mean, walking up to you after that and saying he respects you and stuff. Yeah. That's the be- that, That's what people should focus on when it comes to things like fighting. Um because it was a, a, a momentous, mo- you know, moment for you. That's then, it. But he at least sat me, there and went, yeah. look, the, the better man won, and that's that. Do you know what I mean? Me and him shared that, and it was that. That's it. That me did this. Did you go for a drink after, or like? No, I mean, I can't actually remember what happened. No, I don't think we did. I don't even remember what happened last time. <laughs> fucking no, <laughs> I got pissed You're somewhere. I fucking, know that. Yeah, yeah. I know I got drunk somewhere, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know where or what happened. Um. Oh no no, hang on. No, I tell a lie. I didn't get drunk afterwards. I went for fucking. Uh, I went for a burger. At um. What's the? Uh, I went for an In and Out burger. In and Out. Me, Jason, my coach Jason, a couple other guys went for an In and Out burger. In and Out burger is like a famous burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I drove to this fucking. We drove for ages. San Jose is fucking huge, right? Yeah. I think it was about forty minutes we drove for this uh, In and Out burger. Walked in there. Full of Teat Waters fans, right? <laughs> I swear to God, this whole place was chock a block full of them, and they're all pissed off driving home yeah, now, yeah, right? Because yeah. I tell you what, so say I said about the MMA fans not be, being tight bastards, not wanting to buy the yeah, mem- yeah. memorabilia. They're loyal fans. Oh yeah, they drive fucking twelve hours. They'll drive across America just to watch a fight if they've yeah, got yeah. a fighter going, and that's what these guys did, and they fucking they followed their boy. So to see me walk into the fucking bur- in the burger place after watching their boy get tapped out. Mate, you know what, right? Again, this is the beauty of the sport. Yes, there was a few like, oh, you're fucking sick. But it's I was sport. taking pictures with everyone. Yeah, Everyone yeah. was buzzing. I was buzzing. I was like, listen, it is what it is. Like, I fucking... It's gonna go I told him, if he goes down to the floor, I'm going to fucking yeah. submit him. Like, he knew. <laughs> that must have been fucking... But that, again, that's, that's what I mean. It's Because people don't see the, the... Not only the journey in between... People don't see the, you know, understand what happened in between that time. Do you no. know what I mean? Do you see what you see on the cameras? And, and that's it. Yeah. And they, they sort of put two and two together and make five and then, do you know what I mean? And then you forget it and then you go back. Yeah. But like, because even after that, that was what, 2016 after a year away? Because you had an injury after T.O. Mate, I was in surgery like the very next day. So I fought was on a Saturday. Was that repeat from Jersey? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was in surgery. I fought on a Saturday. Sunday, I was like lying in the hotel room, fucking dying of a hangover. Yeah. Monday, I was in surgery. What happened? Knee surgery. More fucking. Oh, was that the ligament? The ligament. No, they took the ligament out. Right. This is the aftermath of what right, they took right, the ligament right. out. So, uh, stem cells and all that kind of uh, goodness they put, I, I, I went on. Right. So the stem cells, you heard stem cells? Yeah, that's. Yeah, um, mate, fucking dude. They don't great. do it in Britain, they do it in America, don't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's like re- rebuilding the, the tissue. Mate, it regrows. Like, yeah. So this was 2015. I had the surgery. 2000, still had no problems. Touch yeah. wood. Like. Well, that's... um Yeah, because uh, the, after that, it was what? A year? You had to be away for a year. I was away for a long time. That but was, that's that was a, a long bad time one. out the ring. But then this is the thing. It's a long time out the ring. And look who they fucking stick me in against. But, then, no, but that's what I'm saying. It might be a long time out the ring, a year, you know, to heal. The journey before then was fucking amazing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's phenomenal. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and then obviously you came back in, what's it, 2016, after a year away, and then you had your first fight with um, Phil Davis. Yeah. So Phil Davis, fucking stud, mate. Like he is. He's a good man. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like he did, and you've got a lot of respect for each other. Um, again, you need to draw that attention to the sport. 
I mean? Yeah. Because it's not like you're fucking enemies. So I mean, it's not like. No, I have no problem. That's what I'm saying. Fuck it, he's actually a funny guy. Like, no, it's, but that's what I'm saying. Sound, yeah. it's, it's, it's one of them. It's, it's a weird one. But then, um, and then after that, what's it? Return to Bellator at 173. That's what I was going to ask you. When you actually came back after Phil Davis, you know, after the knee injury, your opponent was switched three times. Oh, how this fucking, is, ah. how, how frustrating is that for a fighter? To be you know, obviously, I'm not saying it's Rocky Balboa where you put the picture in the fucking the mirror and you, you know, but to train for a certain type of fighter, whether they be, you know, better, at, you know, whatever. Do you know what well, I mean? that's it. You're training for, for a specific, this fighter. Yeah. So I spent a whole camp fighting, training for Chris. I think his name was Chris. Something, yeah, it's Chris, Irish. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, a, a taller guy, fucking. Yeah. So I spent the whole camp working strategies, like working attacks for this guy. To find out, and I get this text message, and they're like, "Oh yeah, the guy's had an injury." I said, "You fucking for real? Like we're a week away from a fight. Yeah, don't worry, we'll get you a guy. Just turn up." I'm like, "All right." Fucking turned up. That we got, we got this other guy. Put him on the poster. He couldn't get a fucking visa or something, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. So then they got another guy. He didn't want to fucking fight me, right? So then they're like, "We've got this one dude, well, another guy, right? Do you want to fight him?" I don't give a shit who it is. Just fucking put someone in that guy. Just put someone in that cage against me on the night, right? And that's when they turned up with that was the uh, Brett McDermott. That's it, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my fucking god, solid, so- mate. Enough respect for that guy. Like, what a fucking dude. Hit me with that jab. Another one. Fucking, I walked onto a jab. Fucking sat me on my ass. Man, I was like, Jesus, what the fuck have I done here? But again, I wasn't. I wasn't prepared for a, for a, for a no, fight. This is what I'm saying. How frustrating is that? Because, again, you're going in for, in for a camp. You know, the size, the weight, the, the, the strategy of the other man is everything that you train for and against, you know, defence and offence. Every time you do these fights, there's always adversity, right? There's always something that's always going to throw in, be thrown into spanner in the works. Yeah. Can't let it fucking bug you. So that would fuck me Don't up. Don't even... I know. It fucks a that lot of people me. up. That would fucking kill if, me. But that's the fucking... That's the, the, the point. Like, throw this bit in. See how they're going to do with this. Throw this bit in. So let's see how they're going to do with that. You can't let it fucking break you. You have a fucking solid direction where you want to go. Don't worry. Same with getting kicked out of fucking Frank's house at fucking stupid o'clock in the morning, right? Yeah, yeah. Same with getting fucking... Going to America and not knowing anyone. I know where the fuck I was going. And you're still just there in that fucking And just line. go. Don't think about anything else. Whatever the fuck happens, doesn't matter. You have a goal. You have a name. Keep going for that goal. Anything else, bang, bang, fucking dodge it, move it, block it, fucking switch, <laughs> kick it, fucking do whatever the fucking rear neck could choke it, right? <laughs> Keep so, going. So after the, so that, did you win that fight? That was the one that got switched three times. Who was that? Yep, won that one. So you won that one. First round. Was it? I don't know if that was the first or second round. I think it was the. I think it was the first. I know I fucked him up badly, like. But is that the one you got in the corner and and no, that was the the. When you when you hit him about fucking four times with the uppercut. Um, but th- this is what I'm saying. Most people don't understand. Imagine, imagine, you know, like it, even if you're focused on fucking, you know, for the average person thinking about work. Do you know what I mean? Let's just pretend that Monday is going to be a ball lake. You know, Monday is going to be a ball lake, and let's say you got to be out Saturday. Yeah. yeah. You got a birthday party, wherever the fuck. Do you know what I mean? Or any sort of situation that wouldn't have put yourself in where you think, I can handle it, but I know what's coming. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Imagine training in the fucking gym every day, thinking about a guy that's six foot six, then turn around and say, No, he's a smaller, blockier six foot who likes to wrestle. Do you know what I yeah. mean? And then he got switched again to another guy who's a bit smaller who likes well, to fucking kickbox. That was the beauty of it. I'd never had time to think about that because it was literally I was at the venue. Yeah. When they were swapping the guys over. <laughs> Literally, fucking. No, but that again, that people don't think about that. They no. don't. They don't see the you know the behind the scenes thing of of what you overcame. Do you know what I mean of, of how you actually got there? That's the insane part. Um, and then I have to ask you this: Did you you met Mike Tyson? I need to ask what the fuck happened there because I'd just seen a thing on your profile one day of you and Mike Tyson. I was sitting yeah. there going, "How the fuck did that work?" <laughs> Man, so Mike Tyson, I think he was. Um, he was. Uh, I can't remember who was fighting. It might have been. Tito, Tito might have been fighting. So some, some high-profile fight, right? Mm. But he was sat there, and he had, like, three or four bodyguards 
stood around him. Mike Tyson, need bodyguards. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was just security to stop fans from like yeah, 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 him. mobbing him. Yeah, yeah. So the one of the PR guys that works for me, I'm like, yo, I said that's fucking Mike. I said I gotta get a picture with him. He's like, let me leave it with me. I'll go sort it out, right? So then fucking he comes off and I could see him talking to one of the guys. He's like pointing, oh my guy wants to come and get a picture. I'm like hover I was like, fuck this. Yo, Mike, <laughs> any chance I can get a photo? He's like, sure, champ. Comes over and it was the most enduring fucking handshake I've ever fucking <laughs> You know the one where you like hold on, but you hold on to their <laughs> yeah, arm yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, what the fuck is I'm like it was a fanboy fucking Mike Tyson's got a hold of my arm here. Like, fucking amazing experience. And I was waiting for this prick to fucking sort. Yeah, right, mate. Yo, Mike! Fucking, yeah. Nah, but the, the, he knew who I was as well, he's which was a fuck fucking... Do you know what I mean? Oh, I mean, mate, he's sound. Actually, he's levelled out. Do absolutely do you know I mean? fucking sound. But to, for him to know who I was... That's surreal. ...was like... That's yeah. surreal. That's, that's, that's the dream plus the dream. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So you already hold the title. Yeah. And Mike Tyson knows who the fuck you are. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's... that's you know, this the, is coming from dude from fucking Turbis Road in North Lynn, like, yeah. <laughs> any, uh, yeah, mate, any, it's any, a fucking that's experience. What I mean. any, any kid would sit there and go, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean, and again, we're only talking about a very short period of time. We're not talking about, you know, like 10 years of fucking graft. No. Do you know what I mean? We're talking about a very short, you know. This is all happening in three or four years. That's what I'm saying. And two years since you entered the fucking gym in the first place. Yes. That's the insanity part. That's the, the, the part that I want to draw home to people as well. After, when you actually won the title, when they actually put that belt around your waist, do you know what I mean? If you can, because I know you can't, do you know what I mean? Because no one can. That's the most euphoric thing that I'd imagine could ever happen. What? So, ah, <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. You imagine, right? I have thought exactly the same thing. The moment they put that fucking belt around my waist, right? It was like, even a look on my face. You like, just knew. Whoa, no, no. It was a shock that I fucking did it. Like, I knew I knew I was telling everyone I could do it, I could fucking do it. But then everything that I'd been through, all of the fucking bullshit that I'd ever gone through in my life from being a small kid, everything that made me who I was today, all came flashing back to that moment. And then, and I'm like, fuck. Like, it landed in place. Uh, yeah, you, you, you say these things, but when you actually, like, I believed it, I believe it, I 100% believed in myself, right? And I knew I could fucking do what I did, but I was like, fuck, I actually fucking did it. Yeah. Like, that fucking kid from fucking <laughs> North Lynn grew up doing this, doing that, fucking probably shit that you shouldn't have been doing. Like, I should have been there. I was one of them kids who's like, you're not going to amount to fucking nothing. You're going to be this. You're going to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Like, fuck it. like <laughs> It's always them kids. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always them but kids. I, so, you, so to think that you was like, or to to be beaten into you, like you're not, you're not worth that pit point. You're not the fucking, you're never going to get amount to that one. And to actually be there and to be like, fucking motherfucker. Yes, no, I am. That's what I'm saying. Standing there, your arms in the air. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're wrapping the belt around your, your waist. In front of America, do you know what I mean? Probably the hardest place to fucking please in the first place. Oh, hang on. Do you know what I mean? Well, let, let's let's now let's fucking add this one in. The first Englishman to win a major title in America. You're That's the first, the light, first light heavyweight British champion. I'm the first fucking champion from England. Full stop. Conor McGregor, Michael Bisping. Yeah. They're first champions in UFC. I was the first MMA champion. Fucking hell. Yeah, that's a that's a fucking that's a that's a title, mate. No, but that's what I'm saying. It, 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 so after that, so you know, that's you. You're done. You, that that's your dream done. Yeah. I mean, genuinely, what do you do after that? What what what's the thing after that? What's the process? What do you sit there and say, that's it? It's fucking. This is mine. So Any? I know you walked around with that belt. Because I remember when you came oh, back yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had that thing walking fucking... through customs. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Fuck that was you, my hand <laughs> luggage, man. You ain't taking this motherfucker. I remember dropping you off to the airport once and you saw it out of your shoulder. I was like, I'm going to let you walk that through and you're like, oh, yeah. fuck him. It's a fucking gold studded fucking belt with fucking diamonds on shiny. Drop it over. Yeah. So what's the, what's the process after that? Because obviously you have to then defend everything that you built. Yeah, I mean, so... Is it harder to defend than what it is to try It is hard because you've got a target on your back. Yeah. Like you are, everyone's after you, right? You can, you welcome it. After the Tito, after the Tito fight, I was I was pretty fucking crook, man. Like, I I was getting older. 
I'd already been in the building game. I'd been doing living the life I'd been living before. All catch us up sooner or later. Yeah, you know. So it's like after the one surgery, Phil Davies, I lost. Like there you got another ginger ale. Yeah. Lost to Phil Davies one. Um, uh, when you lose, man, it's like fucking falling down a ladder. You know what I mean? Like you've just fucking climbed all these ladders, and all of a sudden you fall. And you've got to take a couple steps, and you a couple steps back. It might take you another fuck couple steps after that as well. Like, and, and it all depends on like the hunger. Yes, I won the title. I won the title in fucking very quick fucking concession. The hunger's always going to be there. I'm, I'm always going to love fighting. Like yeah. that's just that's who you are. Like I said, it's, it's it's either in you or if it's not. Hmm. But I know what it takes to fucking become a world champion. Training eight hours a day, traveling on a fucking train backwards and forwards to a gym three, four times a day, right? That's what it takes to become a champion. Six days a week, fucking grueling, fucking non-stop, day in, day get getting your ass fucking kicked. Not you kicking everyone's ass, right? Yeah, getting that, your that, ass that, kicked, yeah. You yeah, get your yeah. fucking ass kicked. Your coach, you do fucking 15 rounds and be like, right, get yourself on that bike. And you're yeah. like, what? yeah. Walk. I remember one time I hit pads. My coach wouldn't even fucking say anything to me. Like it was just a miserable, like fucking get doing what you're doing. Yeah. Did what I do. See that I was so fucking tired. Go lift those. Yeah. Go throw that around. Go do this. Go like. But it's the pain barrier, mate. You push past it. Yeah. You have, yeah. And that's what the coach is doing. Like the fucking coaches know what they're doing. Like, they're, yeah, yeah. Like if you're like, oh, I can't do this. And you're like, well, what the don't fuck do are you it. doing this? Yeah, don't like, do that. that's it. Yeah, it's time I, to go home. I don't need to be here. Yeah. Like yeah. you're the one who's paying me to fucking come and train you. Like you want the folk. Do you want this? How bad do you want it? Well, that's the pain barrier, the wall. Do you know what yes. I mean? The wall that they speak of. Do you know what I mean? If you can't get through the wall, you either climb over it or you smash through it. Simple as that. That's the coach's mentality. What um, a fucking sledgehammer, mate. <laughs> but that's what I mean. So. Obviously, because you've been, you had a, you broke your hand, you had obviously knee surgery, and then the jaw thing, because that was fucking, not only, man. not only fucking unfortunate, but that was fucking brutal, because <laughs> it went, it, it was with Phil Davis, because yeah. when he jabbed you, the jaw went. No, no, then, so the third, it was in the second round, the jaw broke. That's it, yeah, but then, then when he grabbed you, that must have been some fucking pain. Yeah, because I mean, like, people are like, well, what did you tap for? Like, fucking, I'm like, nobody <laughs> knew why I tapped. Yeah. So in the fight, he kicked me in the second round. And, and it, throughout the is camp, that when, is that's that when, when it cracked. Right, 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 right. And my coach is like, pick your hands up. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think, I could take a fucking kick to yeah, the face. Yeah, it's yeah. not going to fucking hurt that much. It fucking did, right? He kicked me that up, kicked the angle, fucking hit it, right? I heard a crack. Went back in between second and third round and my coach gave me this almighty fucking chat. And and to be fair, I showed the guy way too much fucking respect. Mm. Like, I watching that fight back, going at him in the third round, I fuck it. If I had that fight would have gone the distance, I would have won that fight. Yeah, yeah. Because of the first two rounds, were I won one, he won one, but yeah, they yeah. were very close. It was toss up, yeah. And yeah. that third one would have been the one that fucking nailed it, right? Yeah. But the damage had already been done. Like, and, and, and this is, I, I fucking... St- still kick myself about it obviously like, yeah, yeah I wish to fuck had I I'd done this one and I, I should have done that because I never trained like that the way I trained was in the third round and that's why when I went to the third round I was still full of fucking beans like I could have gone another three rounds but I, I didn't do what was supposed to have been done jaw broke but he hit me th- with a jab that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying as soon as you can see it in the thing whatever happened there and then when he grabbed you, you right. can see the fucking... Do you know what I mean? That wasn't no, you know, like... Mate, that was pain no. beyond fucking pain I've ever felt. When he hit me with a jab, my jaw moved, the tooth popped up, right? And because I've been holding my mouth tooth like this, right, the whole time, I couldn't close because my wisdom tooth was blocking my jaw from shutting, right? So he kind of, like, took me down, like, lay me down yeah, on the ground. Yeah. He fucking hit me in the face, mate. I turned my head, put my... Buried my head my cat on the canvas, covered over... I still remember the fucking when he fucking hit me, mate. That hurt. Then the grab. Yeah, that's it was like electric. Yeah. Went. I was like, no, 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 no. Fucking stop. But that's the thing. That's that's when you watch it back because obviously it's easy watching every fucking. I I, I stop it. I don't watch it anymore. No, but every every every, every, first hand. (laughs) No, but every every wannabe fighter would sit there. You know, you'd see fucking people screaming at the screen and going, "Oh, I'd fucking do this and I'd do that." You wouldn't. The bottom line is. 
if you're in any sort of like, if anything's especially disjointed, whether it be your knee, your elbow, your fucking hand or anything like that, if someone then grabs it with their whole fucking thing and then squeezes it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that, that, yeah. That's pain beyond, you know, like that's... Well, that's why I, that's why I was like, nah, get nah, off, fuck that's it, enough. Nah, like, I, I don't get paid enough for this fucking shit. Get off me, <laughs> that's enough. And he's like, what, 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 what? And then afterwards, I got up to him, I was like, yeah, fair play. I was like, I think you broke my jaw. He's like... <laughs> I knew you was too fucking tough to be tapping and fucking, like, grabbing. That's like, what Because that's the thing. There's actually a thing, a, a mutual respect between you two that people don't talk about. No. Like, he's, he's, he genuinely likes you. you I mean, we're like friends. Like, that's uh, what I'm saying. We've, yeah. had, we've had chats, like, fucking even now, like... That's what I'm saying. Like, you know fucking mean? prick broke my jaw, like, two months, two years of fucking all this bullshit. But, yeah, no, it, like, it sound like... It's part it's of the a game. job. Yeah, it's part of the game. Like, he's got a family to feed. I've got a family to ride for, like... We all have, we all have, it's, it's our job. Yeah. So if we're going to make a little bit of money together, sharing a fucking moment, like... That's it, yeah, that's it. Then fucking, of course you're going to be friends with them. But that was, yeah, that was one of them where you looked at and you thought, fucking... Yeah, that was bad. It was only when it, like say, when the, the clench came around the jaw and I seen you and I thought, because obviously I know you, do you know what I mean? It's not like, and again, I agree with him. I even said, please, I was, please stop. I agree, I agree, <laughs> I agree with him. There's no chance in living hell you'd ever tap out. I know no. you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with that, the, you can't not tap out. What are you going to uh, do? I, I, where, I tried. Where you draw on the other side of your fucking yeah, face. Do you I, know what I, mean? I, I tried, man. I, I, I really did try to carry on, but that was just like, look, I, I can't now. That, that had gone past the point. Of you've, no, got, you've got a point of where you can go yeah. and you'll be like, all right, I can hold out. and yeah. do that. Like with the Vadim Nemkov, like with the legs, I looked, I think it was a minute and 30 seconds left. I was like, I can take this. He kicked me one more time. I broke, I had a broken leg. Yeah. He kicked me out one. I was like, no, 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 that's enough. Even the referee was like, I've had seen enough. A minute and fifteen seconds left. Like, it, 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 you can only take to a certain point. And people think they're made of steel, but the problem is, you're not. We, we're all made you, of bone and fucking skin. Do you know what yeah. I mean? The bottom line is, and and, and this is the thing. There's no one that's going to sit there and say any different about you. Do you know what I mean? Because they know. Do you know what I mean? You've got heart. You've got balls. And you're not going to fucking tap out unless it's warranted. Do you oh, know what mate, mean? I wouldn't ever stop unless... No, but that's what I'm yeah, saying. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Everyone knows that. Do you know what I mean? Even your opponents know that. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to stand there and go, I'd fucking, you know, like, and slag you off. There's always that mutual respect. And again, what I think a lot of people miss, they tune in, they watch, they win, they lose, and they tune out. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And they don't understand what happens, you know, after that, the respect between the fighters. And again, like you say, the sacrifice. You're both making it for your families. You're both making it for the same thing. Yeah. It's it's just two people. Do you know what I mean? Whoever's most people say who's you know better on the night. It's who's better on that second. Yeah, that's it. And, and, and it's all about set seconds. Yeah, that's and it. And that's what I and I found that one out later in the career. Yeah. It's all about seconds, milliseconds. Yeah, not, like it's, you throw it's not a punch. the night. It's not the week. It's not the month. You're all trained. Yeah, you're all fucking warriors. You're all fucking solid, hard dudes, or you wouldn't be fucking doing this, mm -hmm. right? It's about who can get that right hand, land them first, and it's yeah. usually like a fucking tenth of a second beforehand. Bang bang, like that's yeah. it, and that's it, and that's it, and that's it. but that's the game of fighting. Do you know what I mean? But then you have to be humble, and that's it. I think that's why you were built for this in a lot of ways, because you are humble. You're very fucking. You've always been a humble person since the day I met you. You've continued to be even when you had that belt. You know what I mean? Wrapped around your shoulder wherever you went. Do you know what I mean? You've always been a humble person, a gentleman. Do you know what I mean? You're not an asshole. You're not a bully. You're not a you know a prick in any way, shape, or form. And again, I think that resonates with fans because you have to remember this is what people have to draw home. You walked into America knowing one person. You yeah. have a legion of fans now. Do you know what I mean? People who like you, you know, for what you've done, what you've sacrificed, what you've, you know, like achieved. That's huge in itself. Regardless of the fact of what we spoke about so far, the, the time, you know, the, the limit that you actually done it in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's phenomenal. No matter what, it's, it's history book sort of stuff. Um, but again... In the thing with, um, obviously, with the, the jaw injury, what people don't understand is you only have to suffer a few injuries for this to fuck up, you know, a year or two years of your life. Yeah. Because you have to get the okay by the doctors, the insurance, the fucking lawyers, the fucking, you know, all the other stuff. It's not as simple as walking away and going, I'll be back and then, you know. Yes. They don't understand that, the, you know, the shit that you have to go on behind that. What happened, you know, after the, the, the actual jaw injury? What happened after it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I did... Um... We had two surgeries. So the first, after the fight... Is that to realign it? No, no, no. So the first so the first surgery, right, he put like a little... It was a break on the mandibular. Mandibular. Yeah, on, yeah. The, on, the, on, the, on the edge, right, on the corner. 
So that broke away, so he's butted it up and he's put a strap. So basically, eight weeks, bone fuses together, yeah. should have been fixed. Something happened and my jaw moved. And because it would move, scar tissue grew in between, right? So the first surgery was, like, say, seven hours long, right? That's And he came in this way. Now, the second surgery, after six weeks, he was like, listen, Liam, it's not worked. I need to go back in again. Right. Because it's fucking scar tissue, so now it's all smooth and nothing, like... Yeah, nothing's it, 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 didn't, it didn't bond. Yeah. So now we have to go in there again. I have to scrape out all that scar tissue. So and make a bond. He fucking scraped out. So now that has become this, and there's a gap. So now he's fucking had to strap it with two more metal straps, like a car crash victim fucking the thing yeah, yeah, is, right? Yeah. So now he's put um, uh, bone morphogenic proteins or something, that's what they use, right? Right. And fucking some skin graft from a, from a, uh, the, dead, the dead person, yeah, yeah. right? So, um, so now that all is all the inside. So now that has to fucking grow. Took a year. So that's the second surgery took 12 hours, right? I woke up, my face is out here. Like, I had to shave all my hair, my fucking, my beard off. How long was it in between the first surgery and the second? Oh, so I'd only had, like, I'd had the first surgery in April, six weeks. Then he tells me that I've got to go for another surgery. So then there's another two weeks planning and fucking sorting out surgery. So I had my jaw wired shut for three months. Right. Then he goes in for another surgery and then another three months of wired shut. But this time he had to go in through here pull my face back and go in this way so my fucking whole thing and this this stuff that he put in there made my fucking face swell out like that right I looked like the elephant man I didn't even recognise myself yeah I like, remember this yeah <clears throat> I posted a picture up yeah I remember I think that. I was trying to talk like this I was like six months drinking for a straw and you, you, you know you know you how you used to, you know how you take the piss out of people oh fucking you'll be drinking for a straw when I finish for you like shit man like I wouldn't wish that on anyone no, but then Never. But that's a, but that's the weirdest thing is it, I remember you. So I remember you uploading things when your jaw was wide shut, and at least you're still laughing for it. You're still laughing Mate, through what, the fact that you know that that's, can that's, you that's do, what no, can you do? I could sit there and be a fucking like worried, like oh my god, my fucking I can't talk or nothing yeah. like, or try and fucking make light of the situation of like yes, it's fucked up. I'm talking. The only way I could communicate people was by writing on my phone on this fucking app and then playing it. And then, yeah. And I had to change it to a fucking English accent because I wasn't seeing an American accent, right? And it's like, you know, the computer voice, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah how are you yeah. doing? Yeah. Like, there's no emotion in it. Yeah. And it's like, like oh, how are you doing? I'm okay today. And yeah, yeah. Like, like, I'm fucking really not. Like, but now, that, that, my mate would ask me, how am I doing? What the fuck do you think, mate? You're sitting there eating this. I'm fucking drinking a fucking smoothie. Yeah. So no, nah, it wasn't. It wasn't the best of times. Yeah, but you made light of it, which is crazy. Man, I wouldn't have fucking out. I'd have been fucking. But yeah. So then after when they fucking un- and then what happened? We ended up getting shut down in some lockdown. So a year of fucking jaw wide shut, broken jaws, fucking recovery. And you couldn't train for the whole. Couldn't time. train for the whole time. Obviously, if anyone clips you, that's that's it. Oh mate, we would have fucking fucked everything up. Yeah. So then, just as the, just as I was starting, then they were like, "Gym shut down, no more training, no more this coronavirus." You so, then, so then it was like one thing after another. I thought, right, okay, sound for you. <laughs> literally reading your story when you walk through it like this, you're literally plagued with things against you. You're you're literally against the odds every single step of the way. Ain't we all? Well, I guess yeah. And you know what? We fucking I've, we prevail. We fucking fight through what we have to fight through to still do what we want to do. Yes, all right, there's a load of bullshit that goes along with it, but fuck it. You know what? Fucking (laughs) walk down with a fucking samurai sword or a baseball bat, right? You fucking a Viking sword and fucking go exactly. Sound whatever to come, whatever comes across your path, right? Deal with it and move on. Deal with that one. Move on. Deal. That's a fight. Yeah, man. Same with fucking trying to get out of an armbar. Fucking, you're stuck. Oh, shit, but there's a gap. Oh. There's a way to move. Oh, there's an inch. There's there you go. Inch. There's always an inch. There you go. So in between, obviously, that that sort of time, how did you end up in Hawaii? Well, <laughs> I met my wife, and we have beautiful children. And, uh, yeah, 
met her in New York. Air we hosted. met her in New York. Yeah, met her in New York. Right. Air hostess. Um, yeah. Met her a few times. She ended up with uh, ended up with my first son. And now I was thinking, fucking hell. Yeah, so... So this uh, th- this is when you're still out the, the, the game and you're healing? Um, no, no, hang on. We've been together four years. I, there's been a few, like, there's been a lot of injuries now. Like, after Tito, it's just been up and down with injuries. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I think I've just gotten over some some injury or something or other. I don't yeah. know which one it was. But yeah, now we've been we've been hanging out for a while, and then uh, yeah, so she fell pregnant, and we decided to make a go of it. So I have to ask you this, obviously, because you know I've got kids. How's becoming a father changed you? You know, like inside and outside the cage. Mate, I think about this on a fucking daily basis. Like now. To become and to do what I did, I was a selfish, selfish person, right? And I have to be. Yeah. I go to the gym every day. I don't care what, like, birthdays, Christmases. One track mind. It, it didn't, it, my own birthday didn't make a yeah. difference. Like, people would phone me, oh, I have birthday. What? What are you talking about? It's your birthday today. Fucking hell, I don't give a <laughs> shit about that. Like, it, 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 it's what I wanted to do. And the only person in, I'm the only one in fighting in that cage. Yeah. So You're that's, the, that's that the one that matters, right? Yeah. As much, and those are the sacrifices. Yeah. Right? The sacrifices, some are good, some are not fucking worth it, right? Some are bad. But the one sacrifice like, I had to make was to fucking solely focus, solely focus on what I wanted to do, right? Mm. When my children turned up, I've spent six months in the fucking wired shut. Mm. It makes you fucking open your eyes up, like, and realize, like, my kids didn't even understand what the fuck I was saying. I was saying, I love you, and they're like, what the fuck's this prick on about? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> obviously not, a fucking two year old, three year old. But they're like, looking at you going, yeah, all right, dad, like, fucking stop doing that. Like, so, for, to, when I was single, it was sound. I didn't care if my fucking jaw got broken. Yeah. But now I've got kids. That's more... It's more in the back of your mind. It's yeah. A, a uh, there's, the, once you've got something to lose, like, you kind of... And, and, and I, never, I never thought about it because I never had anything to lose, but now I have something to lose. Mm. I'm not... But I you, say, you start doubting that shit, and once you start doubting it, oh, stay the fuck away. Like, well, that's the thing, is it when you, when you have someone else to focus on, mm-hmm. when you have more to lose than yourself, that's I mean, obviously becoming a father, do you know what I mean? I know myself. Every father knows that journey. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But then, is there a, a paradox where it made you stronger, better, more focused? I stayed. I, I stayed focused with my, with my for the championship, but mm. it's a different focus. Mm. Like being a father is different to being like fucking wanting to become a world champion. Yeah. Like you are, you can put it in the same build. Oh yeah, I'm fighting for my family, but. You have to step away. It's a totally different hunger. Yeah, you yeah. have to step away from your family yeah. to do, like, to become the warrior, to become the fucking, like, Viking that we are, right? We literally have to fucking dive ourselves in. It doesn't, there's no room for kids. There's no room for wives. There's no, no room, room for love. There's no room for nothing. Yeah. Like, you literally walk into that gym and you want to fucking hurt people. Like, and it's all done because they want to hurt you as well. Yeah. And it's, yeah, all, it's all, everyone's it's all, on the same level. Yeah. We don't sit there, oh yeah, my kid fucking started climbing yeah, up yeah, and slide yeah. there and he started to call his brother's name. Like it doesn't no, doesn't work no, like no. that. Like you're both in there fuck the about that. Like do me a massive favour. Just swing that drink over near there. <laughs> if you hit your elbow, that whole fucking thing oh, yeah. go up. No, but um no, but what I mean is in the sense of like because I've seen a change in you, you know, when since you've had kids. And it is a change. It's a change that every man walks through. Yeah. I was lucky, I, I, I don't know if I was lucky or not. But I was like, I was young. Do you know what I mean? I had kids when I was like 19. Literally when I walked out of jail. Like, the funny enough, I was getting done for, I can't remember what it was. I think it was breaking entry last night for a shop or whatever it was, Robin, being a prick. And then um, I turned around to the judge, Mr. Christmas at the time. That one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that one. I know that one. <laughs> Mr. Christmas at the time, I walked into court and obviously I've been in the shed my whole life. I had a fucking long history, do you know what I mean? Yada, yada, yada. And I turned around to him as a joke. I was pissed in court, as usual. I said, um, look, I'm going to change my life around because my girlfriend's pregnant. Now, I've been with my girlfriend at that point for about four years. So I was 19. So, yeah, I got involved when I was, like, 15. And I was joking. 
because I don't want to go back to jail, right? Yeah. The irony of that story is I literally left court that day, pissed, walked to a friend's gaff, literally around the corner, um, not even 200 yards from the court. And my girlfriend at the time went and got a pregnancy test, and she was pregnant. So the irony that I turned yeah, around and then, yeah, yeah. and then funny enough, I landed in court for assault about eight weeks later or whatever it was. And I said, next time I'm going to say I won the fucking lottery. Do you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. But like I say, that it's a strange thing because even though you love the life and I love my life up until that point, do you know what I mean? There's that blinker that comes on and you sit there and you go, it's not about me no more. That's do you know what I mean? Exactly and that's it. the weirdest thing. That, that, that thing that grabs hold of your head. And there's two ways you can go there. You can be a selfish cunt and not give a fuck. Yeah. And play yourself and, you know, like, do whatever the fuck. But we all know what happens to that. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, people growing up without dads, it's going to, it's self-perpetuating. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's so just like, a fucking repeat of everything. Yeah, right it's, it, it's going to end up, you know, like, so, you know, even though you become more humble and you become, you know, mature quicker, and ironically, sometimes a better fighter, it's weird how it, how it pans out in that sense. Do you know what I mean? Because the very thing that makes you want to fight is the very thing that keeps you from it. Yes. That's the paradox. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what happens there in the sense of like, you know, so obviously, so now obviously you met your, your lady, do you know what I mean? You're living in Hawaii. What's it like over there? Mate, it's... As opposed to, you know, the other place that you live, you lived in California, New York. Um, so New York, New York was like full of buildings, the underground fucking like, it wasn't, it was sound until it wasn't. Mm. I enjoyed it and I fucking hated it very, very quickly. Um, California, California sunshine. California is like the laid back. Had I have, if I'd have picked, if I was to like say, right, I'm going to America, I'm going to go find a fight camp, I'm going to go find a team, and I'm going to go fight, right? I'd have went straight to California. Right. But being the way I went and had it, had it the way I went. Circumstances, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. New York, and then I found myself over to California, right? California is, that's the fucking, that's like Jersey, man. Fucking sunshine, wake up. Just bigger than Jersey. Everyone's happy, like. yeah, yeah. Beaches there, you go down. I'm gonna run down the boardwalk. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's 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 sound like, but but Hawaii, Hawaii again. I said to my mate, I said, dude, I, said, I go train, I go play with my kids, I go train some more, I play with my kids, I go down the beach. Like, it's fucking paradise. Like, so it's just relaxed, as in. But I mean, I haven't had a very relaxing time over the last couple of years. So, Obviously, yeah. Yeah, and those were the times when I was living in Hawaii, but. You, Lying on the beach, playing and fucking playing. On the There's worse like places kids, to be, like, like yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You could be in fucking London City Centre, do you know what I mean? In a fucking tower block somewhere. No garden, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the thing. So, like, obviously now, you're there. How many kids you got now? I have three. Three kids. Two of my sons and a stepchild, which is mine. That's, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, man. Another 15 and you'll be up to where I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, but obviously, now things are, you know... I think for you, things are levelling out in the sense of... But again, it's still such a fucking short story. It's not even... First off, it's not over yet, and it's still so short. Mm-hmm. We're only talking about, what, since 2013? That's ten. That's only 10 not, years. It's not even 10 years yet. It's it's no, it's yeah. literally eight years. Like, yeah. So you literally were still fixing in Jersey. You were, you know, doing whatever the fuck you want. Do you know what I mean? You landed in the gym, and then you went and you sought your dream. And you found it, and you got it. It's irrelevant at this point, you know what I mean? About um, you know the loss to to Phil Davis or whatever the fuck it is. It, it's it's one of them things where you look at it and you think, well, it, it was impossible. Everything was impossible against you. Yes. Every step of the way, there was no leniency. There was no sponsor. There was no money. There was no anything. Do you know what I mean? So like that has to be a testament. Do you know what I mean to people? Especially in Jersey, when you think that, you know, the island life, the little rock syndrome, we're nine by five, 100,000 people, whatever the fuck. Oh, I can't do this. I, I can't, can't do this. Do I'll never do this. Why I'll not? Never... Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So, so that, that's the thing, having the, the you know, that, that focus. Yeah. And not even, let's be totally honest, if you started that late, there was people that started when they were 16, 17, 18, earlier, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Who've been doing this shit for fucking years before you, yet you still ran through them. Yeah. So it has to be a mentality. It can't be just about, um, you know, uh, physical aspect. Um, uh, if you've got talent, talent is good. Yeah, obviously, talent like, is, you know, where you lean to. But Do you know hard mean? work will beat talent if talent doesn't put in hard That's work. That's nine times why, nine times out of ten, poor people 
succeed. Yeah, because people you know what have the can... twenty times. Oh mate, and the they adverse... fucking they know that they can yeah. do it. But that's always the great thing. It's like just because somebody's gifted something doesn't mean necessarily mean that they're fucking great at it. They deserve it. The people that I posted this video, music video of a fucking dude in a subway playing some music. He's got some microphone set up with a car battery. And I, and I post, I like repost. I've I don't, seen this, yeah, yeah. I don't repost yeah. music, right? But yeah. this dude, and he's got some chick who's fucking like bystander. She walking just joined by. him. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And a pair of them are fucking vibing and they're in, doing what they enjoy doing. Like, they enjoy doing that. They vibe off. I enjoy fighting. Like, I enjoy what I'm doing. It's your passion. You have to have a passion to do what you want to do. Do you think that's where your absent family do you think that's where you're most at home, in the ring? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's where you're most. That's that, that's yeah. I'm comfortable when I'm throwing punches at each other. Somebody's throwing punches at me. I'm, I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, that's literally what the Marines are. That's yeah. what they say. Yeah, you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. That I'm uncomfortable being in a fucking really bad position, and finding a way out of it, and, and coming out on top. Obviously, I have to ask you, what what's the plans next? What happens now? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? What, what's... I, I don't know. Because like... you can shoot for the stars. You could literally be in movies. You could literally do... You know, there's there's not a lot that... You know, when I know... I know you well enough, do you know what I mean? You know, off camera. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, To know that, you know, you've got a personality. Do you know what I mean? You're humble as fuck. You're a gentleman. Do you know what I mean? There's not a lot stopping you. If you took that same logic, you know, that you did with fighting into any other aspect, I reckon you kill it. Yeah, th- that's what um, that's what I, I go in. Like, so now I've jumped back in the steel. I've been doing this job now for the last few weeks back on the rock. Yeah. I, I didn't need to. Like, I mean, I need to do something to earn some money. I didn't necessarily need to go jump back on the steel, but I fucking enjoy doing this. So it's like... You just enjoy graft. Yeah, man. Yeah. And it's the ha- same hard work, the same mentality I'll take into the gym. I'll constantly put the work in what needs to be done. But man, you just you just gotta enjoy life. You've got to enjoy what you gotta do. Like, yeah, all right, you're gonna hit you're gonna achieve you're gonna hit some hardships, right? Yeah. But the highs and the lows the highs outweigh the lows. It's a storm, right? you've got to weather the storm. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? And then but then so is that so have you gotta go back and have you gotta have more surgery? Is there, you know, anything else? Have you gotta get back in the are you going back in the cage? What what's happening now? So uh, I've had I've had eight months now where I've been st- stuck in in England. Limbo, for the, basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've been stuck here, there, and fucking everywhere. I have got some good news though. Right. March thirtieth, I go for my visa interview. Um, so now I can go back to London. I get to the visa. That all goes ahead. Hopefully, within a couple of weeks, I can go back to America, see my kids, right. and figure out where we go from there. Uh, Excuse me. I'm gonna go see the doctor, see him get the clearance on the jaw, see how that feels. Because I haven't seen him for God knows how long. Mm. Um, we'll see where that goes, uh, mate. It's, just see how it is. You know what I mean? I, I I don't know. I sparred my friend, and I was like, I wanted to test my jaw. He couldn't even hit me. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I got. I need to. F- Feel like, it I out. To, like I said to the doctor, if if it hurts, I'll stop. If yeah. it doesn't, we'll see, just take. That's the thing is. that there's probably thousands of people, do you know what I mean, who didn't make it to the heights that you made it to. Mate, fucking loads, who, loads. Who literally gave up everything, who got stopped, and you never even know their name. I think people need to understand that's the sacrifice of fighting, yes. of entertainment. Yeah. So it's not just two people in there that, you know, you just look at as, you know, the way they used to in a coliseum, in Rome, do you know what I mean, as if they're expendable. Yeah. These people put their fucking every day, do you know what I mean? Whether they're like yourself working in, you know, steel or labouring or blocking or plastering or whatever the fuck up. And then walking into a gym every single night to try and better their craft and, you know, get better. Train, yeah. It's it's a ball ache, do you know what I mean? It's a motherfucker. And then to think that most of them people have never been on. Most of them people probably suffered the same injury as you, but they'll never be known because they, you know, got caught short fucking years ago. Do you know what I mean? But at least you with the one person who could turn around and say, I've done it. You did it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? There, there's no two ways about it. You did it. You said that you're going to do something. You did it. And you were the light heavyweight champion of the world. 
that's fucking phenomenal. It doesn't matter which way you look at it. it and in such a short time, and again, like we said before, you started so late, mm. but you ran in so quick. Mm-hmm. And against all odds, you've done it. Do you know I mean, what I mean? Time was against my, against my side there, so I was fucking... No, but that's what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. You know, to, to, to say to anyone, do you know what I mean? Especially youngsters, it can be done. But it, it doesn't matter where you are. All, all, these people, all you ever hear is other people telling you that you can't do something, right? That's it. Yeah. There's no one out like, unless it's in your head, own head, it's like you're telling yourself you can't do it, right? But that's the one, that's the voice you need to avoid. You need to kill. Yeah. Fuck that voice. That one, fight it, right? Other people telling you that you can't do it will knock your confidence and be like, oh, well, maybe we'll have it. Fuck what they think. Yeah, that's the first it's one. It's not yeah. them that's doing it. Yeah. Like, it's you. It's you the it's one your body. Fucking, it's you're your the one that's going through there. it. You're the one that fucking knows inside that you, you, you know better than anyone else. Like, don't listen to them. Like, just fucking, okay, yeah, yeah, Sam. Yeah. And then watch their face when you fucking do what they fucking told you you couldn't do and be like, but how mad is it now when you said at the beginning of this interview you said that when you're in uh, Tangies or Piranha Bar or whatever it was yeah, it tends yeah. to be oh, I'm going to go to America and I'm going to be the fucking champ and <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon after fucking <laughs> when you're yeah. stinking of the weekend yes yes, and yes. everyone's sitting there and going yeah whatever you know what I mean and now it's done do you yeah. know what I mean this one I'm asking is there a point of clarity now where you sit there and go I know you, do you know what I mean? In the sense that, you know, like, I know the sort of person you are. I think that, and this is me speaking out of term now, I don't need whether you agree or disagree. I think you feel like you're richer now than what you've ever been because of your kids and your lady. 100%. More than the dream that you chased to get there. Yes. Which is ironic, but in a good way. Mate, this is my adventure. I was set out for an adventure at 15 years old. Fucking right, I'm going off into the world with my fucking bag. I don't know where the fuck I'm going. I don't know what's going to happen. I know what I want to do. I want to go fight. I want to go do what I want to go do. How I'm going to get there? Fuck knows. Oh, fucking, that's my tale. And and that's pretty much how it's gone down. And yeah, I fucking achieved what I want. And now I have my fucking kids. I have my wife. Now when I get back over there, whatever happens next, mate. Everything else is secondary now. I can't wait. I just excited, <laughs> excited to see where it goes. But long, long term, short term, sort of thing. Irrelevant of the the cage or the fighting or whatever the surgeons say or whatever it is. I have to ask you, obviously, because I care, and everyone else over here cares. Do you reckon you're ever going to come back to Jersey? And if you do, or if you don't, what's the plan? So if you don't come back to Jersey, what's the plan? If you do come back to Jersey, what's the plan? That's um, tough questions every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come back to, I mean, here yeah, I'll, I'll come back to Jersey in a heartbeat, like my mm. fucking friends and family here. Yeah. But again, I got my my Obviously, wife and my it, yeah. kids. And it's a different source. So me making that decision is 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 off the. Well, we all know how this fucking husband thing works, yeah. and we can have an idea, and we like the oh, wife yeah, says. That's it, yeah. But I mean, like my idea, if I was to come back, I would try and and teach and try and open. I've always been try- I've had this idea of trying to open up some kind of centre to try and help things. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of ideas that I have to try and move forward, but it's again timing. It's about setting things up. Things have to be Where aligned. Yeah. yeah, the 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 stars have to be aligned for yeah, everything yeah, yeah. to work. Yeah. If they're not aligned, it could fucking bounce all over the place. Yeah. So everything has to has a timing and a place. Um, but I think I think I think from what I've learned over the years, is like take one thing at a time. Mm. Like you can have all these fucking ideas in the head, uh, put one one step walking, yeah, right foot, left foot, right foot, right. Just fucking do one step at a time, man. I think that's the thing with it. most people in your position will be sitting there and going, if I don't have this, in the sense of if I don't have the next opponent in front of me. I have to focus on this so hardly, do you know what I mean? And go yeah. into it and, you know, fire into it at all cylinders. Whereas you're sitting there and going, obviously you've got your kids, you've got your, your lady and, and, you know, your wife and, you know, things are brushing past the way they need to be. You're literally sitting there like the breeze and going, when it lands, it lands. The way you did at the beginning, mm-hmm. which is, again, the the a story for the ages, so to speak. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're not sitting there and going, well, fuck it, I have to, all the attention I used to have in this 
I now have to focus on that and try and make a change or do whatever the fuck. You're sitting there and going, when it lands, it lands. Yes. Wherever it lands, it lands. Do you know what I mean? So, but I would say, and this being selfish, do you know what I mean? Obviously, from my point of view, if you were to open a gym in America, Hawaii, Britain, Jersey, anywhere, for, you know, wayward youth or, you know, young teenagers or stuff like that. That's who I want to help, yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying. Because you know, you've been there. You, you're not a fucking idiot. Do you know what I mean? Like, you come from nothing and you went to everything. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the sort of person that everyone needs to look at and go, that's what the youth want. Yeah. That's, you know, the amount of people that if you actually take the, um, if you look at the stats of kids in, you know, the UK, you know, with knife crime and, you know, violence and stuff like that, mm-hmm. the amount of people that go to the gym, whether it be MMA, boxing or wherever it is, the amount that offend, that used to offend, goes dramatically low. Do you know I mean from you know like ninety to twenty percent? Yeah. Do you know what I mean, because the gym then becomes their father, their mother, their you know the missing person. That's their, their family. Life. They're the yeah. thing they're looking for. Exactly, and you can never expel a young man's need to compete or you know be a young man. Do you know what I mean it's just one of them things? So like anyone like you, where, wherever you land, do you know I mean? Hawaii, England, America, wherever. Do you know what I mean for someone like you to open a gym to do something? Do you know what I mean people need to snap that up? Right. More than what they know, do you know what I mean? Because the next generation needs the dream that you went and conquered, because you did. Do you know what I mean? It's it's one of them things where you sit there and go, this is why I got you on the show, because I'm sitting there and thinking, it's not the snapshot that you think. It's not the thing where, you know, it just went boom, boom, boom. Yeah. There was so much it, involved. It, it looked like that. Yeah, it looks like it from, did. For the TV but the screen, it does. the bit behind it yeah, was... Yeah, the, the shit that you had to endure all the fucking way. And the fact that... And, and you have to remember, when people say on camera, when people say on film or, you know, whatever, I sacrificed everything. Nine times out of ten, you sit there and go, yeah, but you had daddy's money or mommy's money. Or yes, you had yeah, 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 yeah. You had fuck all. Yeah. You literally, I knew you, you had nothing, you sold everything. You barely had bus fare in, was it Birmingham or uh, wherever it was when you had to fight in England first? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mate, oh, I take that this is look, fast forward so hang on this is a whole fucking random one with a whole yeah go on forward and, what, I'd, I'd won a fight and I got invited to Brooklyn to stay in a hotel to do a photo shoot right and I went up to the fucking reception desk and I needed to put fucking 50 uh, 50 dollars down for like accidentals and damages right I didn't have 50 dollars right <laughs> didn't have no money so I phoned up my missus. I was like, yo, what's a fucking, listen, I need to put a fucking down payment yeah, on yeah. a credit card or something like that. So she's like, hold on, let me fucking, I'll come back and, and, yeah, and yeah. give you the card, right? So I stood outside, I was smoking a cigarette. I'm not supposed to be smoking a cigarette, right? I was smoking a cigarette, fucking stood outside. And one of the cameramen fucking spots me. He said, what are you doing out here? I was like, oh, I'm just, just waiting for my missus to come down and she's going to drop some stuff off to me. And then another guy texts me, the one who was like, he's like, yo, come and pick up your fucking subs or the, the kitty. I'm like, what are you talking about? They give you per diem, the per diem, come pick up your per diem. Right. Per diem is something you get paid per day per diem, right? Right, 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 right So they right. give you money. So I'm like, well, what do you mean? Like, we give you a hundred pound cash. I was like, you give me a hundred dollars. What, for fighting or training? No, 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 no. This is just, just for turning up for this photo shoot. So oh, I get right, a right, two day right. photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $50 yeah. a day, a hundred dollars, right? I was like, so I get some money. He was like, yeah. Oh, sound. I could pay for my room. So he was like, what are you talking about? I said, I couldn't come into my room because I had no money to pay for the fucking deposit for the per diem until, or for the, for the fucking. The, the to actually deposit. get into the fucking photo shoot. Yeah, for the photo shoot. <laughs> the hotel room, which had been paid for by Bellator, but you have to put your accidental damage down, right? Yeah, but yeah, I never yeah, had yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man, literally. No, but that's what I'm saying. Not a fucking it's, penny. No, but all the way through it. No, that's what I'm saying. It's it, and even then, do you know what I mean? It, it, I think that, that I could, you know, for knowing you, do you know what I mean? But then to sum it up, I think that you know the journey that has taken to you now overshadows everything that you've been through before. Because now you've got your kids and your wife, and yes, I know you. Do you know what I mean? I know that that's more than anything. Do you know what I mean? So like your previous dream, regardless of you know like reaching the heights that you did, and you did do it. Do you know what I mean? Now I think the dream is that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then to look forward and and you know maybe to look back and in and, and looking at other people. Do you know what I mean? Especially youth. Do you know 
Do you know what I mean? Because that's, I help that's, them. that's kind of where you land. Do you know what I mean? For me, especially, and obviously with the work that Cheyenne does and stuff like that, it's what every single society, whether you be in London or fucking Birmingham or fucking anywhere in Hawaii, because obviously Hawaii is not exactly rolling in fucking riches. Do you know what I mean? But like, if you see these kids walking in the gym, nine times out of ten, 90% of the time, they're poor. That's, yeah. that's all they have. Do you know what I mean? And you're poor. You're not exactly from a good fucking, you know, like millionaire background. Do you no. know what I mean? And most of the people who are successful successful in that life are poor. That's why that everyone needs to get behind, you know, this sort of thing. Yeah. Where you look, look down a barrel and go, you're never going to alleviate this stuff. You're never going to alleviate people want to be people, you know, like men want to be men. There's always going to be competition, fights, and, you know. You're never getting away with School that. ground shit, and, you know, energy is energy. Focus it. If you don't focus it, you're fucked. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But I think that's, that's your story. That's the thing. But that... It's still crazy to me, even though I've just heard it from your own mouth. It's still nuts. It still feels like that. So for you, how the fuck do you stay like the way you are? You're still so humble. You still, you've come back here. You still, you still go back on the the you know the still fix, and you still you know, you're still you. I don't need somebody to to tell me like, oh, you've done this, you've done. That. I know. Like yeah. I don't need that to make me feel better. Like yeah, yeah. the crowds, like in the crowds, have been banned from the fights. I don't need a crowd to fucking buzz off of to go have you. a fight. I'd fucking go have a fight just there and then. Yeah, right? yeah. So for me, my job is still fixing. I was saying before, I will take pride in what I do, knowing full well it's going to get covered up. But I know that the foundations that I put in is going to hold this building up for the fucking entirety of its fucking standing. Right? It's solid. That's it. Yeah. And I've done it, and it looks fucking, it's tidy, it's straight, it's neat, it's fucking everything, like, it looks perfect. And, and that's but all. you never see it? Nah. But, but, I, don't, but yeah, I, don't, I don't need people to fucking Validate it, fucking, you don't need yeah, people yeah. to validate it. But yeah, at yeah. the same time, it's like, you've done that for British people, you've done that for Jersey people, in your I, fighting career. Oh, yeah. I did it for fucking everyone who grew up on a fucking council estate that thought that was like, oh, I'm never going to amount to nothing. <laughs> yeah. Don't listen to them pricks that fucking tell you that. Just fucking what Just you can't. feel. If you if you feel that you can do something, then go and do it. If you can't, if you fail, fucking you fail. Like what the fuck? What's the worst? Gonna happen? They say no. You say no. like that's the worst. Like okay, sound. It's not the end of the day because the next day you wake up and you're like right, go do something else now. So what you'd say that that's the the worst thing you could do is listen to someone else. Huh? Is listen to someone else. Listen. Yes. Yes. Listen to somebody listen else telling you. Yeah. Listen to you. Yeah, put yourself up one first. Actually. Telling you you can't do something that you fucking put your heart and soul in. Because you see the disappointment on the face when they're fucking like. If you see someone with passion trying to explain something, right, and you fucking shut them down straight away, yeah? And you see the fucking. Oh. The deflation. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's what the other people enjoy seeing. And in this short space of time, we're talking about only fucking. Eight years again, from right, 2013 to now. Yeah, it's, a, and, it's, it's over a span of like nine, ten years, yeah. Nothing. That's nothing. A it's a small fraction. Of and a, you of set life. out your dream and you literally achieved it. And that has to be a. Honestly, man. Thank you for coming on. Cause Mate, it's been fucking sad. I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen these shows, man. I've seen, I, like, I do like the vibe, but I, I like this. Yeah. This is what it's, it's, it's called.